now that your collegiate days are in the past, a new era at the next level awaits. You've displayed your resume on film for the scouts. But was it enough to hear your name called? Many have traveled your same path here and still seek to prove themselves at the next level. Some already have. But will you? All the highs, all the lows, all the hype, all the pressure. Sack all the play, scoop and score. The games. Play action, Jordan Granger. Oh my goodness. The rivalries. The brotherhood. Zion Nickerson's going to just throw it straight the up. The memories. It all has led you to this stage, to this moment. what it takes to be the next star. Can you win championships? Welcome to the new era of the RFL. With the first pick in the RFL draft. What's ooh, oh my mic's on. What's good, relocation football league fans? It's your boy Smitty joined here with some new guests for this year's draft. To my right, I have a guy you may I'm gonna matter of fact before I announce who it is, I want you guys to take a guess on who you guys think my man's is to the right. We already know who Pat is. You don't have his mic on, he had it on earlier. I'm not sure if he wants to show himself, but these guys who are coming on this cast are have vast knowledge of 
everything about the league when it comes to the college and the pro level. And so excited to have these guys on to showcase and, and uh, their knowledge and everything of the league to talk, which these guys will be primarily the guys coming on. Another guest I got coming on to host this cast will be uh, Chrome. So you guys seen Chrome last year, he announced a draft pick. Now he's actually on the cast and uh, he will be giving his insights and everything as going on. Matter of fact, speaking of Chrome, there it is. Let's go ahead and add him on real fast. Get the camera on. Oh, bang, got the hot keys up. Very smooth this year, but most of you guys have guessed it. It's Amir Williams, the first round draft pick from Miami. Let him know what you repping, man, because you already know. What's up? What's he got up, the man? shirt on. You know, I got the got he the got game. the shirt on. Had to come out here and represent. <laughs> and uh, you know, draft day is something special. So before I even hop into that, each of these guys who are on with me right now have all been drafted before in the RFL. Uh, of course, some multiple times. One's about to be multiple times in the mirror over here. Uh, Nate hey. definitely been drafted about three or four times. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, Pat, he just, uh, he, he's, of course, made it, made, even made the top 100 this year, man. So shout out to Pat. Um, let me go ahead. I'm going to keep that uh, music, though, rocking in the back. But I want to ask you guys before I started out, how was the feeling of being drafted in the RFL for you guys when it happened? And we'll start from right to left. So I guess I'll go to Amir, then Nate, then Pat. Man, it was something else, dog. Just the build up to the draft, I was hyped, and I kept, I kept hearing like I'm probably gonna be a late first round or early second. So I'm, so I was, I was nervous, man. I was nervous. And then I got that, I got DM from Justin. He was like, "Hey, we're gonna pick you up here." And I was, I was hyped. I was, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to this team, but I'm be honest, I thought I was going to like the Pioneers or something. I was <laughs> I was Everyone's thought I was the trash the <laughs> Everybody, nobody want to go to the Pioneers, and that's still the same mostly for right now. But I was, I was surprised when the Steamers picked me up. But hey, it's been fun ever since I got to the RFL, and I'm hyped. I talk about Pat being on the top 100. You cracked into the top 100 as well at number, I believe, 96 or 95. So another yeah. shout out to you, well uh, reputable guys here in the RFL. Uh, speaking of reputable, this guy has pretty much been our insider been going and he has vast now has been here for a long time an og of the rfl nate chrome allen we gonna call him what's going on man how was draft day for you my guy yeah it was good uh i remember when my linebacker uh duke pascal got drafted because um at first i had no idea um when he would be drafted because back then like how the draft work and scouting was way different than what it is now so because like back then it was only like the, the top three attributes that was revealed so i had no idea where he was gonna go i assumed because there's like a, a a mock draft right and it said i was gonna go to the bulldogs which is actually pretty ironic when you think about it since duke is on the bulldogs right now so i was expecting to get drafted higher but then um uh I, my my uh, duke got drafted to the huskies and that was that was pretty cool and I remember like watching the um, the draft um, video with that with that dude. I forgot it was like the the, the AI, the AI not the AI. animated guy. Guy. Yeah, uh, I don't know what type of accent that was that he had, but uh, yeah, he, yeah. He, he was serviceable for two drafts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I was I was excited when they like the AI dude like said my player's name and. It, it was that was that was great and the and with my kicker i had no idea when he was gonna get drafted i was actually very surprised that he got drafted at all because i thought he was gonna go undrafted but it was cool that he got drafted by the cougars i think in the sixth round so i was like very happy about that and that guy got david jones right dude yeah he didn't get drafted he pretty much got thrown in as a free agent but uh yeah. At the end of the day, man, this guy's got a plethora of players in the league before the rule came in. And, man, Duke Pascal, talk about that guy. That guy has won two championships for both the Huskies and the Bulldogs. So he's a beast in this community, man. Great community member, man. Glad to have you on here, Nate. And, Pat, I'm not sure if your mic's working, but um, how was your experience on draft day, man? How excited are you also to be on this live stream tonight? Is he here? 
Well, he's in the meeting, but he's not in the. He's not in the Discord. In the VC. Oh. Pat, you gotta jump in the VC so we can hear you, man. <laughs> uh, they can't hear you through the uh, Zoom. You gotta jump in the Discord. But anyway, man, Pat, as I said, cracked in the top 100. Don't want to spend too much time here early on. Excited to have these guys on. Again, like I said, all of these guys are OGs in the RFL community just based off of their knowledge uh, coming at different times, you know, within the RFL, Mirror and College Series 2. Of course, uh, Nate being here before that, uh, Pat, uh, Pat McNeil um, in College Series 2 as well. I mean, just be glad to have them on. And so, of course, before we get into all of this, you already know. Let me go ahead and turn the beat off. You guys already know it's draft time, man. You hear that sound? When you hear that sound, that means the pick is in. And uh, a little bit smoother this year. But again, if something does take a little bit of time, I'll let you guys know what that is. Another thing, right now you can see the round at the top. I can change that pretty fast compared to last year. There we go, round two. We get rid of it right now though it's round one now the picks i will have to manually change because um i don't ha i had too many hot keys so i couldn't make anything for that so those i manually change you'll probably hear some clicking when the picks are going through um and i have to manually change the team that is up next uh speaking of that i didn't even have the draft order up uh, so let me go ahead and get into that uh if anybody can one of you guys can you copy and paste the first round draft order into the uh, the live chat right now? And I'll try right. to catch it and, and pin it so that way guys know the order of the draft. Um, I'll try to find it. I forgot which channel it's in. I know guys was asking, but it was so much stuff that had to be done before this draft. I'm telling you. I uh, didn't have the time. Yeah, get this I'm trying to find a draft right now, so I could... excuse me, fellas. Okay, here we go. S9 draft. I got the order. Let me make sure that I'm on point. The who's up? Right now, we already know the first round draft pick belongs to the Dublin Shamrocks. And when you hear this sound, you are also going to get this to appear, which means the pick is in. Whenever you see that. It'll come in for a second, and then I'll click to remove it. And then, of course, when a player is officially announced here, their draft card will appear on the screen. Overall and everything. Now, this is another thing I want to point out, guys. Um, there are no devs right now. And the reason why is because at such so much stuff going on in the RFL, star devs will be determined after the draft okay so i still have to do some work with the uh developments of players so because of that i still don't have a clear indication of how many stars i can give out at this moment so there won't be any star reveals i guess you'll get another surprise if you've got it after the draft and we'll of course uh make that be known maybe there'll be an extra piece of content so um yeah so that's how the draft is going to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be on this cast, but I'm going to go ahead and pretty much leave it to the guys here on the panel to like discuss who they think is going to get picked, you know, talk about some guys, certain things like that. And I'm pretty much going to be in the background, but I'm going to be here working. You guys are going to see me working at the same time. Um, and then I'll just chime in whenever uh, I feel the need to. But I really want to put these guys in the forefront. And so they can really get, hit you guys with that insight about certain players and about certain things in which they've researched about teams and stuff like that. Uh, hopefully Pat's good. Is he? He still ain't hopping yet? <laughs> Wait, is he in here? Oh, he's not. No, nah, I don't know what's going on with Pat right now. But we'll have him on the screen still until he gets in. But um, hopefully he'll be in soon. But with that being said, it's time to start a draft. RFL coaches, you know what to do. When it's your turn, just DM me the pick, and I will get it. And another thing is I used to – one more thing to announce. I, I had to upload every draft card in the past to this um, – to what I'm streaming through, which is the OBS. And um, that took a lot of time. Now it's much more easier because I have the cards made. I can just click them in. So you might hear some clicking in, and when, I, when the clicking comes in, and that means – 
you, you know, uh, players coming in, you might not hear it because I'm, I'm going to have my mic muted. Another thing is, unfortunately, I'm going to give myself... I didn't upload the bell. I did not upload the bell. Let me, uh... <laughs> Hey, nah, we not. Nah. Yeah, I'm gonna give myself an extra bell after that. But um, let's see if I can find it. Oh, somebody got it. Oh, it's in oh, the yeah, soundboard. This, oh yeah, the soundboard oh, yeah, can the come soundboard. through. Okay, so you guys now people on the panel can have their own bell. How about that? That's crazy. <laughs> oh man, I tell you what. Back in the day, I know <laughs> Bill and Mix would have loved to play Preston joints on me back in the day. But uh, yeah, let's see. Um, copy. All right, yeah, there it is. All right, peace. Okay, now I got my own bell to press. You guys should be able to hear it. Hold up. <laughs> Bang, there it is. I got the bell. All right, so now that the bell is uploaded, it is now officially time to start the draft. I will mute my mic as i scrounge around for most of these picks as um shamrocks are on the board one more thing too i know i said the one more thing before if you are assistant gm and i am making a pick for the team um unfortunately me doing so much stuff um i probably won't be able to shoot you a dm i'll try and you can call the person ahead of time to have a phone call with them and let them know that they're getting added to the team coaches you already know you can do that as well now is officially time to start the RFL draft. With that, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic, and you guys can ponder on who you guys think the Dublin Shamrocks are going to, well, the Boston Shamrocks now, yeah, Boston. are going to take yeah, with the number one overall pick. All right, you want to go first, Chrome? Oh, all right. Um, In uh, Pecan's mock draft, it says that the Shamrocks would pick Brock Frederick out of Ohio State. Do you think that they would do that, or would they pick someone else? Uh, I believe they're going to go Brock Frederick here because when looking at their team, they don't have a single left outside linebacker, and they, you know, Brock Frederick, he put he was outside linebacker in the college series, and he's honestly the best best outside linebacker in this draft. So it would make sense for them to go uh, Brock Frederick here. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't really think of what other player they would choose in this decision, especially since they have the first overall pick. So they can pretty much, it's not like they're like the Lumberjacks or any other team. So I feel like they will go with Brock Frederick. Or maybe if they still want like a linebacker, I guess, outside linebacker, I guess George Chamberlain. But obviously, in my opinion, I feel that Brock Frederick is the better out of the both of them. So... Yeah. It would yeah. make more sense for them to choose Frederick with the first pick if they're going to choose a linebacker. Yeah, Brock. Brock. Brock is a he's a beast, man. As much and as much as I don't want that man in my division, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he probably going to end up here. Yeah, he was great for Ohio State uh, in the college series this last season. All right, guys. So now the pick is officially in. Make sure I get it ready. All right. Make sure. With the first pick in the season nine RFL draft, the Boston Shamrock selects Brock Frederick, outside right. linebacker right. from Ohio State, seventy-eight overall. 86 speed, 85 hit power, and 85 tackling. So Frederick, I know he's got tape. You guys can go ahead and uh, dive into y'all thoughts on this um, while I go ahead and search up his tape. All right. I feel like that was a good pick for the Shamrocks because, as we know, Brock Frederick was great with Ohio State during the college series. And... You know, he got that tackling. I think you said 85. Was it 85 tackling? Yep. And if you guys want to see, uh, I'm streaming it also in the Discord. So you guys should be able to see oh, what okay. I have on the screen. All right. I'll go to the Discord and check that out. Oops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 86 speed, 85 tackling, 85 hit power. Also, 78 overall. 
I assume obviously he, he will start, so he's gonna be a yeah. good, you know, player for the Boston Shamrocks. <laughs> and <laughs> it, it's it's gonna be. I'm probably gonna mess it up and say Dublin because I'm not used to them being in in Boston. But this is this is a good pick. I can't wait to see him play for the Shamrocks and see what he can do. You know, uh, what are your thoughts of uh, Brock Frederick, Amir? Yeah. Yeah, this is a great pickup, man. Brock Frederick, he he is a he is a beast out out at Ohio, out, Godly, at Ohio State, and like I said, as much as I want him in my division, you gotta respect the guy, man. He he made he made a great he made a great play, and Shamrocks really really helped their front seven here with this pick. Yeah, definitely. Let's see, Brock Frederick, 115 total tackles, 10 TFLs, five sacks, a pick. Man, this man was out here balling. Yeah, for real. Can't wait to see how it will play in the league and how that will translate to, you know, to professional level. I feel like it would translate pretty well. Yeah, yeah. He actually let the, lucky led his team in pass deflections at 16. So that man. So he. So not only can he hit, but he can cover. Well, you can see from these highlights. Got these highlights rolling. So I'm hyped about that. Highlights yeah, on demand. Once again, if you are a prospect in this draft, make sure to send me the link to your highlight tape. So that way I can play it just like how I'm playing right now to YouTube for guys to be able to see uh, here on the track. Yeah, man, he, I just see him holding some some of these quarterbacks and, and other all the ball carriers, man. Yeah, he, yeah, he hit. Yeah. I'm thinking like, what RFO linebacker would be best? I said a minute and 30 seconds. This highlight is two minutes long. Oh. <laughs> What's God, going on, we, Pecan? You know Pecan, 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 Pecan like, yeah. You know he had to give, give his uh, high state guy to shine, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the guy clearly has two minutes plus long of, of highlight tapes. The reason why he's coming in at 70 overall. I mean, this guy, his sticks and fumbles galore we're seeing right now. <laughs> And uh, Shamrocks need this because, you know, we talk about the Dublin Shamrocks. This defense has been the, the struggling part of, I keep saying Dublin. I got to get used to that myself. The, the Boston, Boston Shamrocks, these guys just, um, you know, got to gotta be able to uh, step up in that department because it's really just been the, uh, the, the, um, hold on, click this. the Wood Show. Yeah, I said the Wood, um, Wilson Show, excuse me. Wilson's yeah. just been, you know, the guy who's just been um, managing the, sh the Shamrocks as long as he, he could, you know, with the explosive offense they got. Now on the defensive side of the ball, they can get things going here. Um, and, and I think that that's really going to start. They keep taking those steps. They got some pieces. Wilson's kind of on the older end. Um, they get some uh, that defensive piece right there. That helps out a lot. They got a uh, they need help with that linebacker core. They got some young guys. But they need young guys right there. Uh, you got um, Alfred Walker, a guy they picked up a few years ago, playing an outside spot. You got now Brock Frederick on the outside as well, a fast linebacker, and uh, Demario Waters. So the linebacker core is looking actually pretty stout right now for the Boston Shamrocks. And with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and um, put on the next team. Uh, for a second pick it's going to be having the lancers but now they are the lumberjacks lumberjacks um, yes sir lumberjacks in louisville wow lumberjacks. i don't have lumberjacks oh i forgot to add that wow okay so uh forgot to add that Yeah. So now I gotta, now I gotta uh, get this logo, man. This is crazy. Um, I'll be back. But at least you guys know who the team is that they replaced. If you haven't already, you guys could go ahead and talk about uh, who you guys think. Huh? On the mock draft, it says. Matt Wilcox out of, out of Michigan. Uh, do you think they'll, they'll select him? Or at least a right guard? 
Yeah, I think they're I think they're probably gonna go with the right with the right guard position. They have they have one guy there already, but he's 29 years old and he's only he's 29 years old, and he's I think he I think he's a low overall actually. It's pretty low overall, I believe. So honestly, Matt Wilcox would not be a bad pickup there because he's he will be a, he'll, he's a he was a very good old lineman out there for Michigan. Honestly, in my opinion, the best old lineman in the draft outside of, outside of maybe Fredo. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, 75 overall uh, for their current one. So honestly, it would make sense for them to go. It would make it would make sense for them to go guard here because they're gonna need it. And yeah, I know a lot of people. A lot of people are saying they 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 should go get that quarter get a quarterback, but I don't know. Nah, not not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. I mean, the O line should be a priority. Yeah, because one thing that a lot of guys got to understand with this, um, we have. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, good, sweetie. But. They one people one thing that people gotta understand is that right now in RFL, defense and O line is top top priority. <laughs> oh Golly. Whoa. It is Oh, because I downloaded that and I think it's like it's huge. But it it's like the the detail. Yeah, I had to for the emoji thing I had to make like a s like a smaller to make it smaller so it would, it would fit because it wouldn't be able to fit. <laughs> they say they saying Bell Smitty. <laughs> Bell Bell. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> there you say, look at the detail. <laughs> well, I'm talking the whole time. I got to bow myself again. I had myself muted. I had some, some jokes too, man. I, I didn't get to hear those. Put some kind of way. But uh, that was some good detail on that Lumberjack logo, though, so I can't even blame The myself. detail, yeah. the L and the J and the beard. Oh my goodness. Crazy. <laughs> bro, CC, y'all here fooling, bro. <laughs> this is what I said, <laughs> I said Bell Smitty for not putting catching on upgrades for cornerbacks. Catching on. Another thing too, I forgot to mention this before. I give my this is what I was gonna give myself a bell for. I'll get another bell. So uh, there's some pictures, some draft players that don't have their picture in, and uh, I guess shout out to Corbin Coast because you're like the main guy, even though you're not in this draft. Who we use as the demo pick so um there are some players who don't have their player pick but their, their attributes and everything on the card is correct i'm gonna go ahead and fix that though when your player gets drafted and then throw them on uh you know out in the public when that happens so and and i think i might have mentioned this all offensive linemen unfortunately don't have any picks i was trying to get them but i had i was really cutting time today to try to do that and yeah again it looks like smitty hating on the o-line but uh it is what it is uh, look like pecan, pecan DM me NASA. If it's cool, if he can come on, come on, uh, come on up here and hop in, hop in with us. Oh, uh, right now I don't have a setup. Like I can't, like with this, I don't have this setup for five. So he have to wait till tomorrow or something if he's available. All right. Okay. I know this pick taking a little minute, but uh, he said he said he can talk through Discord. He can just if he's able to hop in now he can uh right. yeah if you're, able, if you're able if you have the permissions to hop in uh the vc then yeah go ahead hop in go ahead chat some pats out here uh i don't know what's going on with pat. Pat, pat is in my a right now man uh, yeah <laughs> i have to take the homie spot Alright, let Pecan just hopped in here. Let's 
going on, man? What's up, season nine draft? Yeah, can you, yo, if you come get on the screen, on through the stream, I can't really hear him. If he's talking oh, wait, right no, now, let me. Uh, okay. Yeah, let me fix my stuff. Yeah, let me fix fix my stuff. All right. What's up, season nine drafts, Mini? What's going on, man? What's up? The reigning, defending. Uh, Rock here we go. Frederick, the number one pick. Now we're on the number two pick. Who are the Lumberjacks going to take, guys? Who are they going to take? Right now, we agree with you on, on Matt Wilcox right now. I think that would be a really – yeah, I, I think that would be a really good pick. Guy didn't give up a whole – like a whole sack for a whole year. I mean – I mean, as much as I, I – as you guys know how much I feel about that Michigan team, you guys are only going to hear it tonight because it's the draft, and i got to be unbiased. So, But he was a beast this whole entire year, getting on a single sack. I mean, and the Lumberjacks need a guard. And if we think who they're going to take in that second round, this is where I think they want to go. So, I agree. I agree with that one. And you know I was giving my whole my whole talk yeah. over earlier about the them not taking the quarterback. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't think y'all gonna see it tonight, man. I know Jordan Granger, Tyon, all them out there waiting, but I don't think it's happening tonight. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen tonight. I know, you know, last year we had Kevin Poole go to the Huskies, we had Miles go to the Miners. I just think tonight there's so much offensive line and defensive line talent that needs to be that needs to go before we see a quarterback go first. All right, guys, the pick yeah. is in. And linemen are important. With the second pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the Louisville Lumberjacks select Garrett Evans. Linebacker. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. All right. 76 okay. overall, 90 hit power, 85 tackling, 85 speed. You guys talked about the linemen. Definitely see the issues there with linemen, but they have decent age. Uh, they also have the few older guys they got are really good in overall right now. Don't see them retiring anytime uh, just soon. So at the end of the day, didn't see that as a top priority need here for the Lumberjacks. So instead, linebacker, they're really hurting. And um, to oh, get yeah. this guy, especially as active and uh, as a generic as he is, I mean, this, I mean, and not a generic, excuse me, I don't know what I'm talking about. And uh, as active of a community member as he is, I just know he's going to be able to build his player up to be a beast on this Lumberjacks uh, team. And we know the uniform is going to be fire. So congratulations, Garrett Evans. You're going to Louisville. You're going to be a Lumberjacks. What you guys got to say about this pick? I think that's a good pick, you know, with the Louisville Lumberjacks, their highest um, middle linebacker is, is Justin Yaron, who is an 80 overall. So I feel like he could quickly, you know, pass him, you know, since he's, you know, a player and stuff yeah. like that. So, and with that 90 hit power, that's, that's really good. Yeah, and then 85 speed. So he's, he's not slow. He's not slow by any means. So No, he's not like, slow at all. Yeah, so you're probably going to see him in the sub-linebacker packages, getting some work in there, and just trying to build up his overall before he can take over that starting spot. All right, so what I do have right here is he sent his highlights via um, a video. Um, I forgot. I told him it was okay, but then when I looked at it, I was like, nah, I don't know why I thought it was a link. So I'm about to go and um, give him a – yeah, let's, let's go put his highlights on no, but this is a really good pick for the Lumberjacks. I was talking to Garrett Evans, and me and him were having a talk, and he was like, do you really think I'm going to be the first middle linebacker to go off the board? And I'm like, bro, like, out of any middle linebacker that, like, declared in my mind, I feel like you are the best one. And, you know, he had some thoughts like, oh, but I wasn't on the award list. I was like, bro, anybody that watched the Oregon tape, they saw your impact on the Ducks' deep 
defense and what you brought. You guys made the playoffs because of your leadership on that team. And I feel like that is such a huge boost to have for the Lumberjacks, and it's what they need. And he was a big reason why they made the playoffs in CS6. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I got, I got his stats right here. 169 tackles, 6 plus your health, 4 sacks, and hit. 8 pass deflections, 2 more tackles. He was out here balling, man. Pretty sure he has a red. I mean, if you watch the highlights, the guy was everywhere on the field for for the Ducks, man. And I, I feel like this is a great uh, pick for for them to have because we know they've had deep defensive issues, you know, the last few years, especially last year. But I mean, if you look, the guy had. The, I mean, the 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 guy ranked six all time in career tackles with 290. Seven. He had 169, the sixth most all time in a college series scenes. And and as as you just saw with, with with the hits, man. I mean, not only just like Brock, the guy can bring the boom. So I I think this is a great uh, pick for the Lumberjacks to get. Yep. Yeah. Eric Evans, Louisville Lumberjack franchise here in. Shout out to you, Jared. Uh, Jared has his man, Elvis. Congratulations. I'm glad they were saying the music was wild on that. Oh, it is? Congrats, Evan. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah, I probably didn't tone that down. I'll play the other in uh, instrumental. <laughs> um. <laughs> Literally, yeah, no, I mean, CC brought it up as I saw in the chat. I meant the. I mean, the guy had 297 ta tackles combined between CS3 and CS5. Like, he's everywhere. Well, all right, now we're on to the third overall pick, which is the Chicago Cougars. The Cougars. Shout out. Shout out. Right. Who do y'all think they go here? Uh, I definitely think they're going defense. Well, we all heard that they're either... I, I mean, if you hear from the guys that are on the Cougars, you know how much it's been hype about they need defensive end talent. So yeah. Yeah. Austin Sanders, to me, seems like the obvious pick here. Um, I know Drew uh, set. Seth Brewer, no, yeah, Seth the Brewer was another name, but I think Austin Sanders has the two years on him. I feel like Austin Sanders is the pick here. Unless, you know, we did hear, you know, that they do need an offensive lineman, and is this where you go get the offensive lineman of the year in Will Cox from Michigan? You know, is, is that where you get him here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I think they're gonna probably stick with the defense because, like like you were saying, like you if you listen to the Cougars, whether it's CP Darius, they like we need a we need an edge rusher, we need an edge rusher. So there and right now, no edge rushers come off the board. So we got so we got some good players out here. You got Sanders, like you said, you mentioned uh, Walker. I, I'm, I, I know I gotta I gotta say Elijah Walker out here. Um, yeah. Ryan Ward, Quintana, you, you can't go wrong. Ryan with Ward is another good uh, pick. There's a lot of great D line talent. I I I do agree with with, with 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 that. To me, I feel like the consensus number one D E on this board. Now, what if they go deep defensive tackle? What if they want to get Darius Donald, who was his counterpart? What if they want to go get Javier Wheatley from Ohio State? There's other options that they can go here on the defensive side of the ball but i feel like they are going to go with austin sanders here all right so the pick is in all right with the third pick of the first round of the rfl draft the chicago cougars selects austin sanders right. defensive end nice oklahoma 75 yes, overall, 84 tackle, 82 speed, and 80 play recognition. 
That's big. Right. AD play, no play recognition is good. Oh that is a God. good, good yeah, stat great. to have. Yeah, he he gonna be reading that play actions. So he gonna yeah, he is not it. going to be fooled. Yeah, he, he gonna be reading them them options, them play them them play actions. He and them that Cougars defense. Y'all better watch out. Yeah, that's a great stat and, for a rookie to have so high. Yeah. 84 tackle, 82 speed. That's really good speed to have, too, at the left end spot. You know, this is a guy that's been active the whole entire year. He was active in CS, CS4, you know, and even though OU had a bad year in CS4, he was a big reason why OU was so good in CS4. Five and um, this is a great a uh, pick, man. Because I I feel like that they've always said that they needed help. We saw last year how many times the Cougars were just giving up a lot of points, and this is the guy that they need to get pressures on the quarterback. Yeah, definitely. That, yeah, that for is, real. That's it. <laughs> if it wasn't so early in the if it wasn't so early in the round, I'd say that was a steal right there. Watching this guy's tape. The yeah, guy just making plays. Ways. Yeah, you got um highlights here. Damn, don't. Oh, Sam, one thing you want to remember: don't let this man come free off the edge, bro. Because you, you saw it throughout the year. If he came free off the edge, you got, your quarterback was going down, or your running back, for that matter. And look at his pursuit too. The guy has really good closing speed too. Like this is not a guy that you can just simply outrun. He will get after you too. So. To me, I, I feel like this is a home run pick for the Chicago Cougars and everything, and um, I'm very excited to see him in the Chicago Cougars team. And uh, Austin Sanders, welcome to the Cougars, man. Yeah, he's going to be a great help. Yeah, he's going to be a great help to the to the Cougars. Another guy who's active within the communities. He's been excited about this draft. Third overall pick here. In the yard, fell. I know he's excited. I know CP and the guys are excited, and uh, I'm sure once he gets in the, the Cougars locker room, he's going to be excited. The message that he sees when he gets in there, because being a part of that locker room, they said, "Yeah, Darius woke up in the morning and was just like, hey, who, who we like taking here in the first round?" And everyone just said Austin Sanders, and yeah. there he is. He's on the squad, yeah. and uh, I know everyone's going to be excited to see who he's going to bring to the franchise, man. Yeah, that's that's a great pickup by the Cougars. Yeah, for real, I agree. Yeah, I well, and we have been hearing. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Go on. No, I was just gonna say, guy had twelve sacks on the season, so y'all yeah, twelve about, sacks. Yeah, from the Whoa. D as a D, and he had more than his D tackle. Um, Darius Donald, Darius Donald finished the season with eleven. So hey, he's that 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 um, the ARC man. <laughs> y'all better y'all better watch out for this guy. Well, and just like Smitty said, this is a guy that's a very active community member, and we have been hearing that from the Cougars as well, that they want a user type of defensive end that is going to be able to build his guy to keep getting those rear lows and everything. And this is a guy that has shown in the past that he's willing to commit and be here and be a part of the long haul. And I think he's a great a pick and he's a great community member. And um, yeah, King. Yeah. And King grass to Sanders as they're already calling him the, the Sandman in Chicago. Hey, hey, I like that. I like that. All <laughs> right. Know? That's good. You know, I you think know, it, you know, Chicago gonna come up with good nicknames for their guys, bro. It don't matter. It don't matter. Yeah, I think it'll fit well into the culture that um, the Cougars have there, you know, in the locker room. Yeah, and up next with the fourth overall pick in the draft, we have the Portland Snowhawks. Ooh, oh pecan, boy! All right. All right, pecan. Who you think they going? Even though we all missed out on the intros, this was a team that I was drafted to last year. Um, I feel like this is where we go. Let's see. We traded Jed in the offseason, and I know the word was that we were going to go after a defensive end pick here before everything. And to me, I think this is where we go get your boy, Amir. I, I think this is possibly where we go get your boy, um, Elijah Walker from Miami. But I know cornerback is also a need as well. Do we go get Jay Hayden here? Ooh. Mm. Ooh. 
All right. So huh. I I definitely think the Snowhawks go go defense on this side. You because like you mentioned, you traded away the Jedi Richardson, but and I so y'all have y'all still have a very young linebacker core, so that's something y'all don't even really need to look at right now. So corner corner, you got Hayden, you got Spriggs out there too. He's out. He's still out there. Um, you got JJ and- Harris, Dalen oh. Mitchell. There's a lot of good cornerback talent. Yeah, and yeah. If you go D, if you go D in, like it, like I said, Walker, you still got Quintana out there as well. So, and, and the pick is officially in. Pretty quick there for the Snowhawks. Okay, make sure I got my buttons ready. Don't let us down, Smitty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> With the fourth pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the Portland Snowhawks selects Elijah Walker. Ooh, defensive let's go. Miami. Ooh. 78 overall. Spent three years in the wow. RFL College Series and was up there again in his third year in sacks amongst the top guys, he was definitely top three, 85 speed, 85 strength, and 81 finesse moves. I know guys are excited to try to see what the rest of the stats are, but unfortunately with the setup, I guess more excitement is going to be you're going to see the rest of the stats once the uh, the file drops for people to have access to. So um, no highlight tape here. For anybody who didn't send a highlight tape uh, or uh, anybody who doesn't have any highlight tape or anything like that, um, I, I, I couldn't get to it. So due to that, you know, some some players won't have a highlight tape. But Elijah Walker, we know this guy. He's been a beast. And I would just like to say I'm sorry to all the guys that I couldn't make a highlight tape for. You guys already know my situation going on because I know I made the tapes last year, so I'm really sorry that I couldn't make tapes this uh, year. Oh, but you're um, good, man. No worries at all. Yeah, um, but let me just say, this guy has the most – Sacks outside of KMJ, I mean, he has a record that I think is going to be hard to beat, but he has the second most sacks in a career with 33. Like, this guy gets to the quarterback, always has, always will. Um, even in CS4, when Jacob McCall, no, wait, wait, who was his second player? Who was the other Miami deep? Tyreek McCall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you watch a lot of those Miami games in CS4, you would see that a lot of those sacks that that McCall got was because Elijah Walker was coming on the other side. So just imagine how how many more sacks this guy would have gone. Uh, This was a big need for us on the defensive side of the ball. Um, If you looked at the team that we had, I'm trying to go look for it, um, but this was a big need for us, and I'm excited to watch him play. Like this is a guy that's going to be a freak on the defensive side of the ball. But I want to hear Amir's thoughts since this is his second player. First off, the fact that I made two first-round players is crazy. <laughs> 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 and then this one, this guy, a top five pick. So hey, I, I'm happy about that, and just just the fact like I knew. The first season, the first season when I saw when I saw how he did, I was like, all right, I'm, all right, I'm, I'm gonna have some here. And then I think I think um, I had like a, like you were saying with uh, Tyreek McCall, that man. I promise you, my second season, if it wasn't for Tyreek McCall, I would have probably laid the nation in sacks because he kept stealing all my sacks. Dog. <laughs> I was I was yeah. I would get out. I promise you, like one if I had one or two more seconds, not even that half second sometimes. If I had half a second, bro, I would have got to the quarterback for McCall. But hey, I'm I'm happy about that. Happy. And this is a guy that I played against twice in college as well. I know Amir, you don't want to hear it, but this is a guy that we played against twice um, in the bowl games and stuff like that. But the pressure that he created just on that Miami D line, you know, throughout through CS3, CS4, CS5, he was a person to be reckoned with. And um, for us to get him on the Snowhawks, man, I'm very I- excited about this pick. And yeah, Khalil, you don't have to play on the DN anymore. You can finally play at the linebacker spot now, so. Yeah, it, all right. And, yeah. I, and I, I remember I made this graphic. I had to go back and find it. I had, in my first season, just to let you know how how crazy the um, crazy pressure I was getting in my first season, I had seventy five pressures. That's Whoa. like court. That's like QB hits, sacks, 
hurries, all that stuff. I had 75 pressures in my first season. That 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 shocked me there. Just tells you how much of an impact that he made, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, I still I still remember. Um, and another thing that I mentioned about both my players, like. We always have our breakout game against Notre Dame. If you if you go back and watch that Notre Dame, Notre Dame game first on my first season, CS3, uh, I had three sacks. I remember I had a highlight clip where I threw McKinley Weeks and threw McKinley Weeks out, out the way and got to the running back as soon as he tried to get past me. <laughs> so right. pioneers are on the clock Sir, really pioneers. quick. So I had them going Jonathan Craig here, but Will Cox is still on the board. You got oh, yeah. Javier Santana at quarterback, and to me, they need a right guard badly. I think they go yeah. with yeah. Will Cox here from Michigan. Yeah, that that pioneers that they need no line. Otherwise, yes. Javi Javi is going to be in trouble if they don't get that old line up. Yeah, he's going to get he sacked so much if they don't get more better linemen. So, Javi, how you, tall is you, Matt? Do um, we know how tall Matt is? Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Will Javier be able to see over Matt if he gets drafted here? <laughs> I was just about to say that, bro. <laughs> that, that man gonna be what? Is, what is he? Five nine? Five eleven? One of those? He's yeah. five nine. Yep. Five nine. All God. right, man. The pick is here. In. We go. And I'm gonna just give myself a bell early because you know why. Once I reveal it. So there we go, bell. But anyway, there goes the actual bell from the guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, I like saying this though. Y'all know I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Pioneers move to Pittsburgh. Man. Oh God, yes, here sir. we go. Oh God. Oh God, Wait, here we go. <laughs> and we in the playoffs. What? Let's go. I didn't think we're uh, gonna win <laughs> most of our games. Got that but high I... end talent. All right. <laughs> With the fifth pick in the first round of the RFL draft, the Pittsburgh Pioneers selects He said that so proud. Matt <laughs> Wilcox. Oh yep. there we go. All right. Offensive guard from Michigan. Now that's why I had to bell myself because this is Corbin Coase. He's not even in the draft. This is, like I said, no offensive lineman got any photos. But uh, oh. I will add those tomorrow, guys. So we're going to be sharp. There won't be any photos like this uh, for day two at least. But, uh, yeah, no <laughs> offensive lineman highlights either. So I feel really bad for doing a lineman dirty every year. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. But he's a great player. 79 overall you guys talked about the need at the offensive line position for the pioneers <laughs> definitely needed it uh okay now when it says 93 speed don't look at that that's it's that's, not speed that's supposed yeah, to be strength. Was, okay that's it that's okay a i was so like I, I I speed. 308 pounds with 93 speed that, that's supposed <laughs> to be uh 93 oh. strength <laughs> My bad. Oh. I was about to say, hey, yeah, yeah, that'd be yeah. crazy. I was about to say, man. Bro. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. He's He's the the way. <laughs> That's the fastest That's fat quiet. man in the world. Yeah, bro. Was... That, bro I'm telling you, if I was about to say, man, if these DBs get it, if Javi throw a pick, bro, y'all better take off. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're getting Will chased Cox, down. Will Cox coming <laughs> for you, He's man. He's going to be the guy that catches grooms to stop that game winning interception. <laughs> in like the Georgia game. <laughs> I just want to say here uh, the irony of it being a Michigan player getting drafted with a Ohio State player on the call. Gonna, I, I just want to I, point I that out. That joke. I was about to say, hey, hey. Yeah. If, you see the first uh, <laughs> if you see the first attribute, uh, have speed first, that meant uh, I accidentally didn't change it though. So this might happen to okay. a few players, but uh, yeah, that's definitely strength. So he's got 93, 93 strength, strength, 85 that's so run good. blocking, oh my God. 83 impact blocking. As you guys said, this guy didn't even allow a single sack all season in the RFL. And I don't believe there is an ever, uh, ever alignment that has done that, to be honest, that started um, all year. Um, so this guy was an absolute beast, man. This is this is a guy yeah. that's a, a well-needed pick uh, for, for the Pioneers. When you look at the depth a chart, they needed offensive line help badly. And for them to finally go in their first full year with Javier starting out this is what they needed for sure 
And, you know, Javi, you got yourself some line help and everything. And just like I was saying, this guy didn't give up a single sack the whole entire year. Like, that's how talented yeah. he was. He won the offensive lineman of the, you know, of the year award. Guy is a beast. And, um, yeah. hey, Pittsburgh gone to the Bowl. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh gone to the real <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think you know, you know, before Smitty used to say he he really liked the dreadnoughts. So I don't think that's gonna happen no more. He, he about to be ruined for the pioneers. He is about to be ruined. Yeah. Let me just say though, the Pioneers new look uniforms, guys, one of the best new looks out of any teams oh, yeah. too. One of yeah, the, I like, agree. the top look. Yeah, they they, they look they, really good. Yeah. You can't call you can't call them the doo doo Browns no more, man. They, they, no, <laughs> dude, they did them right. So hey, new uniforms, new offensive guard. I know Smitty is excited to see that. So yeah, hey, shout out to shout out to Bees, bro. See Beasel, man. Hey. Beast, man. Absolutely, yeah. Beasel did a <laughs> great job on those. Beast. Those are some great jerseys. Beast, bees. So we got the Barons Beasel, on Beasel. the board, guys. Beasel. I had Jay Hayden going here from Miami. Let's see. Let's look at, let's look at this. Let's look at this. The, these Barons, man. Yeah. Jay Hayden. They need a cornerback. They need a cornerback, oh, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Because, let me see. Because last year, they got Jehovah Hampton in last year's draft. I know they drafted a big time linebacker in Nolan Carroll. Now, they did take Tyler Bowman last year in the draft, but Tyler Bowman is more of a slot cornerback number two guy. They don't have, in my opinion, that number one cornerback that is like a Maurice Rising or a Richard Grooms or a CC Joel Howard guy that can like come in and be a number one cornerback. Jay Hayden, in my opinion, is that guy, and the Barons need that lockdown cornerback, especially if you look at the division they play in, which I'm sure they still play in the same division as the Explorers, right? Or did that change? Um, um, I, uh, I believe they are still in the same division. Yeah, I think, I think so. That's what I'm saying. When you have wide receiver talent that the Explorers have, you need a lockdown number one guy. And... The Barons don't really have that. Yeah, um, you could also, you could, we could also see them go D in here. I mean, they they okay. do need some help up front. They do need some up front because uh, let's see, Lance Harrison, seventy four overall. Oh yeah, and he's twenty six. He's twenty six, so he's hit that regression, that regret, like that, um, not regression, but progression slowdown. Because you know, in Madden, once you hit twenty six, your your progression gonna slow down a lot. So you probably not gonna see him jump up too much in overall anymore. And yeah, that's true. Two years left on his contract, so you might you might see a DN go here now. Yeah. And Makes we sense. already saw Sanders, Elijah Walker go off the board. Who are the other guys? There's Ryan, Ryan Ward. Ward. Ryan Ward. You know, there is Ryan Ward, Brewer, Brewer. Cantana. Yeah, Brewer. But I I feel like I wouldn't take these guys at six. In my opinion, I wouldn't take these guys at six. But All that's right. just me. That's, that's understandable. All right. All right. With the sixth pick in the RFL, the first round of the RFL draft, the New York Barons selects Ryan Ward. Defensive wow. End. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Georgia. Okay. 74 overall, 85 strength, which is what it should have been on the last card in terms of attribute acronym but uh 84 speed and 80 tackling hey, we're starting hey, to see a run believe, on defensive ends i believe he sent hey. me a highlight tape hey six five two sixty eight that's a big dude i know who that that's is a big dude man oh yeah better than his cs3 guy for sure Hey, bro, you're going to start a war in, that, in the chat, bro. You better that. than a CS3 guy. Let me just say that. If you know, you know.
But no, Ryan Ward was an absolute monster, and he showed his presence all year. Uh, made yeah. an instant impact in the Oregon game. Um, and he also got a touchdown of his own in the Alabama game. This is a really good pick for the Barons. Yeah, just like just like Washington pointed out in the chat, Anthony Washington said, "84 speed on the D on the DN." Hey, yeah, that's really good. <laughs> yeah, I had to go ahead and pick up a defensive end. You know, these guys went out and um, they had Sean Bailey here. The good point you brought up. 27 years old he's not gonna get much better than he is they already have a 74 overall guy there behind him in harrison but harrison is 26 so he's not that much better one thing about and he's ryan not going ward, to develop yeah and one yeah. thing about ryan ward he he's is an, a, a, a user player would like him to be yep. a little bit more active but i mean he has been pretty active since he's got back in the uh discord so i really do feel like he yep. can rise his player above where he currently stands and be a key piece to his baron's defense moving forward See, uh, yeah, I like hate. this pick. Everybody, everybody talking about how he got 84 wrong. speed, bro. Saying, saying these DNs getting faster, bro. Hey, that's why you need to. That's why you need to make sure you got a good O line, like we've been saying, because they they, they coming for your quarterbacks, bro. Yeah, very true. I like this pick, though. You know, even though I thought they would go cornerback here, I think Smitty is absolutely correct when you look at the defensive line talent that they have and what they need. This is also another position of need of theirs. And you already got Nolan Carroll there, you know, in the middle of the field. I think this is a great pick for the Barons and Ryan Ward has played great for the Georgia Bold and Dogs and everything. So King, congrats to you, Ryan. Oh boy, even featured with a sound bite on a draft trailer. So uh that's goat status. But um, moving on see, see, to pick how, how you gonna do seven. It? How you gonna do it like that, man? He just got drafted. You gonna take that shot at him, bro? Uh -huh. Pick number how seven. Now we have the dreadnoughts. This is the dreadnoughts. dreadnoughts. Speaking of the CSO team, so I. I feel like with the run on defensive end, we have heard that they are needing deep defensive ends, but they also need offensive line here. Uh, do they go Jonathan Craig? Oh, and this is our first, I, I'm pretty sure this is our first coach user pick of the draft too. Yeah. Yep, it is. Yeah. Yep. This is our first coach user pick of the draft. I think, do they kind of jump the gun here and take, you know, Brewer here? I, I did predict Brewer would go here. Um, but at the same time, I mean, they still need offensive line help, in my opinion. And you still got Jonathan Craig. You still got plenty of guys here in this draft that, you know, you got Sean Nix from LSU. You got... Let me look at some of the other guys. Yeah, I, I think they need a guard. You wanna you wanna go Chrome? Don Woods from No Under Dame. So Yeah. Um if they need like a guard, Don Woods would be a good option. Um Maybe Chad Kutch Kutcher, but I think Don Woods would be better. Is the better player, so yeah. I have to look at their death chart. Uh, I yeah, I can see. I I see them going. <laughs> can I just point out that Ryan Ward just made one of the funniest comments that I've seen? Is that see, corn corners corn aren't reliable <laughs> as defensive linemen? Take it from me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, let's just, in there. hey, it's all let's, right, right? <laughs> Let's just hope this man doesn't somehow end out up in coverage, bro. Because if you got a 60 overall tight end on you, you might be cooked, bro. Oh, yeah, because with their own left guard, they have Frank Champion, but he's like a 72 overall. So yeah. I right. think that would be a good pick for them if they were going to do that. All right. With the seventh pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the San Antonio Dreadnoughts selects. Colo Ransom, middle linebacker Ooh. from Baylor, Ooh, okay. 73 overall, All right. 85 That's hit power, 80 pursuit, and 79 tackling. I need to see. You if know, I was, I was, I was looking at that linebacker spot, but I'm like, mm, I don't know. We might, we might, they might want to take the linebacker. Interesting pick. I yeah. I
Definitely a position of need in a sense, but I didn't think it was that important. But hey, Colo, we saw how big he was. Um, a key play for him was the Oklahoma game. Um, Oklahoma up 14 to zero in the Big 12 title game. And if it wasn't for his forced fumble to get the momentum going for Baylor, I don't know if we have the historic Jordan Granger game that we got if it wasn't for him. Uh, the man almost got Baylor to win in the game against us in the Sugar Bowl when he forced the fumble, but we all know what happened there. But still, we have seen uh. Colo... <laughs> so we have seen Colo's presence on this Baylor D defense. And this is another pick in the line of Baylor linebackers with Jacob Reed, Alvin Mack, and now you got another guy in Colo Ransom as well. Yeah, these Baylor guys, they hype for their guy in chat. You can see you, you can see the Bears all in chat. Oh yeah, I see them. Yeah, if uh, my bad. If if you have a highlight tape, guys, uh, I can't see anything recently. Like I can't, I don't have the time to go back and look for that. So. If you do end up getting drafted, you got that tape, send it to me. Uh, I thought Colo had a tape, but um, I couldn't find it right now. So we're just going to move on, though. But guy's a beast, and um, guy's already dove into his history, his accolades, and things he's been able to bring to this team in just one year, 21 years old, coming out the draft. So shout out to you, yeah. Colo. And big shout out to you for helping with the stats this year, my guy. Yes. Literally, no, thank you for those stats. Yeah, one of the biggest reasons why he has the reloads that he does, he's going to be able to bid up his guy. I know he's a 73, but he's he is he's probably going to be like a 78, a 79 at the end of the year. Like, the guy will definitely be playing a lot. And, um, yeah, no, King grass to the Dreadnoughts. They got a great pick here, you know, and two more picks later, you know, they are going to be on the board, and they got the linebacker that – that they wanted but uh third year in a row a baylor linebacker goes in the top 10 oh yeah yeah and mm. oh you're gonna say no, something no you go ahead Crum. you go ahead oh okay i was gonna say that in their depth chart um they have uh ricky uh two 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 yeah tootley who's an eight overall so if he's like you know he progresses you know he can probably replace him at that starting position, like very soon, maybe like next season. I think season at the... young though. I think he's like 24, 25. Oh. But I tell you what, middle linebacker is getting up there. It's Nolan Angelo, even though he's a beast. Maybe that's he's already preparing for the future with. Cole oh yeah, that's there. true. That could also be a, pot. Yeah. That's a possibility. Yeah, two Tuli is twenty five. He's twenty five years old. Oh okay. And and they run a three four, correct? Uh, honestly, I um, have no idea going into this season, so. I have no idea. Yeah, who knows if they're making changes. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, because they might change from it. The, as, of, as far as we know from the draft, with the draft, the depth charts that you sent in the Discord, right now they run a 3-4. So, but that could have changed. So. Oh, don't look at the uh, the content there because oh. that's all random too. So, uh, oh, okay. that was oh, just so right. I could oh, put oh, it out the there, but oh, those okay. formations are not accurate. Oh, yeah, in the chat, uh, yeah. the Dreadnoughts Co said we're running a 3 4. Yeah, Frankie yeah, said we're running a 3 4. Just drop that. So, so, so hey. there you go. Yeah, there you hey. go. That's, that's what good. you will want then. Yep. All right. So, so let's see. That's a, good, that's a good pickup. That's a good pickup. And like Rados. I said, they have, a, they have another pick later on in the in the in the round so let's see what we'll see what they do there too all righty so the desperados last year they got Keno thedford here um let me go back and look at their Rado, other Rado. I'm trying to see who i had them i had them taking sean nix here but now you know don woods is still on the board jonathan craig from north carolina but sean nix from lsu would still be a really good uh, pick to me, I think they need offensive line talent because they still have Tavion Hall there at running back. Um, to me, I feel like it's it's a no-brainer to go up, up offensive line here with the Desperados. Yeah, that's not a bad pickup. If yeah, uh, from what I'm seeing too. I don't James see... Allen, a 69 overall at right guard. I, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, they. Yeah, no, nah, they're definitely going. They're definitely going 
O line. Yeah, they and need a lot of help at that position. It, and even if you don't look at the outside of just that, you pro they could go Fredo and move him to a guard because even though Fredo's a center, you know they, they're still he is a guard. user player. Yep, and he's an interior lineman as you're about to say. Yep. So you might see Fredo go here as well. All right. With the eighth overall pick in the first round of the RFL draft, the Dallas Desperado selects. Oh, I didn't network. No. I think this is the wrong button. Oh. I'm going to start it again. <laughs> All right. With the eighth overall pick in the first round of the RFL draft, the Dallas Desperado selects Don Woods. Offensive Ooh. guard okay. from Notre okay. Dame. 78 overall, 88 strength, 82 run blocking, and 82 pass blocking. Don Woods. This is another guy. Again, yeah, this is another no guy. for Lyman, so. Yeah, so <laughs> just ignore Corbin Coast. You are my guy, but you're not getting drafted 20 times tonight. You are my <laughs> guy, Bill. But Don Woods, this was a guy, he only gave up one sack the whole entire year. Um, as I mean, Notre Dame in real life has been known to produce amazing offensive line talent. I'm not surprised that they got blessed with another generic offensive lineman here um, in the RFL College Series. Only give up one sack. Now, their offense wasn't the best, but he was the best part of the offense for sure. If you watch any of the Notre Dame games, this guy was locked down. You weren't getting past him at all. And um, he was a big reason why they were able to even get to a bowl game with the ridiculous schedule that they had. I mean, you, you saw the teams that they played against. He played against Ohio State, Miami, USC, and all of these teams. And he only gave up one sack this whole entire year. That shows just how insane of a player that he was on the offensive line spot. Yeah. And that and that one sack came early in the season, but like against Michigan. So, so that means for from week third, from week three all the way to their bowl game against Oklahoma State, he did not give up another sack. Crazy. So, hey, that's, yeah, that's, that's really that's, impressive. That's and we saw the teams that they played. They played Alabama, Miami. They played Ohio State. USC and for him to only give up one sack I mean against the Oregon Ducks like they they went through a gauntlet the whole entire year and for him to yeah. only give up one sack it just shows like how talented that he was so yeah. and, and you know we you know Miami we we have a we always produce great o -line, great D linemen so the fact that he didn't give up a single sack and against Miami either is like that's that's an impressive feat that, that not many people say they did. So, I meant the guy was not. I mean, I, I meant the guy was going up against Wyatt Harris too, who was defensive lineman of the year and didn't allow Wyatt Harris to get get a sack. That yeah. tells you everything you need to know. Exactly. So we'll the dreadnoughts here yet from uh, Frankie. Do they still have the number thirteen pick, or didn't they trade that away to get nine? Right. Uh, yeah, they traded yeah. to their 13th to get nine. Um, I can't yeah. remember who it was with. Uh, um, I could Bison with the Bison. Bison. Yeah, I had them going Michael Simmons with their second pick because I think they would need a guy to be opposite side of the field of KJ. Um, and we've seen how many reloads Michael Simmons has, obviously with you know the word that i'm hearing about but maybe here we've already seen you know the notre dame lineman go um we've already seen will cox go do they get the offensive line help that they need here and wait to take maybe tevin corbett or a wide receiver with that third first round pick that they have yeah yeah, yeah you might you might see them swing back and get fredo fredo yeah, has been in Ooh, that was quick that okay was. All right. Sorry, I got this right. Okay. With the ninth pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the San Antonio Dreadnought selects Michael Simmons, wide receiver from Baylor. 75 overall, 93 speed, 83 catch in traffic, and 
80 deep route run. This hey. is a great pick. This is hey. an absolutely hey. fantastic pick. Yeah, especially hey, with that speed. Good. Oh yeah, that speed is 93 speed. Can't teach that. Well, and we we know that KJ just as as great as KJ is, they need another guy to take the to take the I mean to take the roof roof off. That's not just KJ as well for Owen Jack to throw the ball to. And as we saw Michael Simmons the whole entire year, I mean Michael Simmons was an absolute beast. For Baylor, I mean, the guy had, I mean, he led in, I'm pretty sure, I think you have the stats up, right, Amir? I mean, this guy was all over the field. I only have the records up. Yes. But he, he, he was also a very underappreciated wide receiver back in the Clemson days. If you go back and watch the CS4 Clemson games, I mean, he wasn't appreciated enough because, you know, of the pers personality that Flame is. And when you go back and watch the games at Clemson, he was a guy that always got the first down for him, always made the really clutch uh, catches for him. He had a big catch in the South South Carolina game. And as you see his tape here, I mean, the guy, I mean, and he's wrecking no the gloves. no glove slew. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a no gloves <laughs> out there. Oh. Yeah, it's even more yeah. impressive. Yeah. The fact that he's... he's Oh man, that that one-handed catch right there. Yeah, that, that man, one there goes catch. another one. No gloves. This, this guy's got size, twelve hands. That way, no, <laughs> no glove Simmons. Uh, let's see, seventy-six catches, uh, 12, 1,200 yards. Michael Mitt hey. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, no that Mitt boy Simmons. got hands. Yeah, this guy was constantly making plays. Especially on the deep ball, as you can see with that 80 deep route running being his highest deep route running attribute, his top three uh, key attributes to look at. Guy's a monster. Hey, hey, you know that's going to work out for the Dreadnoughts because you know they love to throw that deep ball. Oh, yeah. Already got a guy out there. He can throw it up even if he's triple cup. And especially with like the play action too, with Perk and everything, this is a guy that you would oh, yeah. want that because you know with KJ he's going to be double coverage, triple covered. So this is yeah. a guy that they will have to be able to, you know, to bring that other edge to the Dreadnoughts offense and everything. And I like this pick and um, Michael Simmons, King Grass. I mean, I'm pretty sure he has the most reloads outside of Cam Johnson here. So this is a guy, he's a 75 overall, but he has a chance to be maybe a 80, 81 overall by the end of the year because he has so many reloads. He is RFL rich, boys. Like, he's got it. Yeah, and then yeah, the definitely. thing I want to point out is heading into the season, I had Michael Simmons listed as my number one guy. And he's With, without a doubt. Out. Yeah. With without a doubt the best wide receiver well, talent Mary was in the draft. On them early, uh, <laughs> yeah, by. that hey, hitting look, on them early predictions, I, man. Hey, look, I don't know. I can't say nothing about two through ten because some of them were kind of crazy. But uh, I got that. I got that number one guy. I got a number one guy right. Yes, sir. Hey, and Darius, you saying prove it in the chat, bro? Go to my go to RFL Spotlight on Instagram. You'll see it. Yes, my mock right draft right. is actually not too far off too like i've actually done yeah. pretty well on the mock uh, draft here yeah let's see it's the dillos armadillos who now look like actual armadillos with their unis yeah, see, those unis look good. let's see dillos Boys. I think they go Darius Donald here. I still believe they go defensive tackle here. Let's see. Oh, oh I forgot. I'm, I'm over here looking at these because I keep the armadillos. They, they are armadillos. Let's see. Mm, yeah, I can see them going D, D line, D, D line. Or maybe O line because they. Well, let me check their age, the ages for their guys. Because I see a straight 70s across the board for O line. We'll see how let's see how old they are. Twenty nine, twenty six. We may we may see an O line. Either they're going they're definitely going line though. 
either O line or D line. Yeah, you still got Jonathan Craig. You still got uh, Sean Nix on the board too. Uh, DJ Taylor, the right tackle for Tennessee. You still got him on the board. Um, but when you look at the Dillo's defensive tackle spot, I feel like this is a huge need for them. Um, yeah. I don't know how old Cameron Hayward is. Uh, I know it's probably random, but Hayward's I'm pretty sure the Armadillo's. Yeah, and I know the Armadillo's did run a 4-3 last year, and you only got Cameron Hayward there with Perrion Winfrey. I feel like putting Darius Donald here. In my opinion, I that's who I would take. But... Um, that wouldn't be a bad pickup, or maybe, maybe Mount. Well, no, Darius Donald actually. I would, I would go Darius Donald because he's. Oh, Darius player. Donald is by far the best deep defensive tackle in this draft. Yeah, yeah, he, I agree with that. And now that he's a user, so. Yes. All right. With the tenth pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the Austin Armadillo selects. Fredo Vasquez. Oh, center. oh USC, oh. 77 overall, 90 strength, 85 impact blocking, and 82 run blocking. This is a position of knee because they have a 71 center on that offensive line. This is a great pick, in yeah. my opinion. Yes, yeah, do they need a... Do they need a deep defensive tackle? Yes. But there's also a bunch of defensive tackles in this draft that they can go get later on. Uh, they have a 71 at center, um, especially with the cornerback. You know, you still got Chumley there who needs protection and everything. Yeah. This, in my opinion, is a great pick. Yeah, definitely. This would be great for the Armadillos. Yeah, the Corbin Coast again. Yeah. Corbin <laughs> Coast got drafted for the third time tonight. Yeah, but USC, yeah. hey, hey, Fredo, man, this guy, he's another active user center that's in the league, which we already know, guys, how big a user offensive lineman is to have and how important they are. And for him to come in as a 77 with 90 strength, 85 interior block, and 82 run blocking, um, you know, Levi Dixon is now the man there, you know, because they drafted him out of USC. So, hey, you got another USC guy up there in Austin. So, yes, yeah. Yeah, Fredo, you know, like you said, active community guy. So, you know, he's going to be getting them reloads. And it, I know Severio probably hype for the man, too. You know how oh, he, you, you know, know he like, is happy. You know, you know how yeah. much he been hyping up Fredo. He been hyping this man up. And you know, he was a big reason why Cinco Cardenas had a pretty big year at USC too. Oh, yeah. I mean, like Fredo was hard to get around at USC. Oh yeah, definitely. Now we move on to the eleventh pick of the draft, which belongs to the Sacramento. Condors. Well, now the San Jose Condors. Yeah, San Jose right. Condors. Let's see. Oh, I got the wrong logo in here. Oh. Time for a big logo uh, swap again. Oh, God. I'm going to take up 90% of the screen. Yep. I got a down. So, I had the Condors going George Chamberlain here at outside linebacker. They got... And Terry's Cockrell at right outside linebacker, 75 overall. You got Christian Barclay, the left outside linebacker, a 77 overall. Um, this is why I predicted George Chamberlain here. Anybody who watched Florida saw the impact that George Chamberlain had. Um, but trying to look at other picks that they could possibly go here. Yeah, I'm doing the same right here because I... I can't see this small font on my laptop. Oh, wide receiver is another possible need for him. Let's see. Oh, yeah. True, that, that could work. In my opinion, do you go get Tevin Corbett here? Possibly? Hmm. I think they might. I might. They. Hmm. I mean, which, which I, do I they need be, the most? I'm, to me, I think they need an outside linebacker more. Uh, yeah, I think 
Uh, honestly, you can't go wrong with either one of those picks because you can see Kevin Guy, and I mean, he's an 80 overall, but with his age, you see. Yeah, I don't know how old he is. Or I forgot how old he was. I know, I remember before when I first got into the league, I was always confusing him with Keith. I'm like, wait a second, how are you on two different? I know, two yeah, different like Kevin and Keith guy. I know, I'm, I I got confused by those two. Um, see, Safety guy. here. 29, I, 29. Okay, so receiver wouldn't be a bad pickup. Like you, and like you mentioned, they also could go... Defense. Outside linebacker, you know, maybe cornerback here, but I know they drafted Christopher Numa last year, and they don't have like all the best cornerbacks. They already drafted Aiden Freeman here last year from West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing the I'm seeing that cornerback need as well. Let's see what else. There's, to there's, me, many different, there's many different directions they can go here. It's honestly, to me, tell. with the Condors, it's going to be either outside linebacker, wide receiver, or cornerback. I This could possibly be where Jay Hayden goes from Miami. Mm. Yeah, that could he could go here. Oh, yeah, that could work. You got, that could work out. You could either go Hayden you could like, or maybe go Corbett like we mentioned before. Maybe, maybe. They get Sheffield, Kentaro Sheffield out from Ohio State. Got a user there. Could they go him, TJ Hulk, Holcomb from Auburn. He's he's another one that's on the board. Um, I'm trying to remember the wide receiver's name from South Carolina. I'm trying to remember his name. South Carolina. Um, a little Stamper. Yeah, him. Yep, him as well. But then again, Tevin Corbett. You know, even though he had half his receiving touchdowns he raised due to an error, he was still a monster. So yeah. that doesn't take away, like, yes, even though he didn't score 17 touchdowns in a year, the guy was still a beast. Yeah, and that's, I'll be honest, that's one of the things where I messed up when it came to my predictions is I had Corbett at seven. This man is probably my number two guy. Right. I, I think they go George Chamberlain here. That would be interesting. Here's the button. Okay. With the 11th pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the San Jose Condor selects. Oh. Hmm. oh. Uh, Did he save my picture? This man got drafted twice. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Simmons, walk up. Is that, wait a second, huh? Yeah, I fixed that. Oh, no wonder why. I Sorry, Dreads. Position. Okay. He is a Condors now. All right. With the 11th pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the San Jose Condors selects Jay Hayden, cornerback from Miami. 75 overall, 92 speed, 78 man coverage, and 76 press coverage. Jay Hayden, man. Congrats you know to him. He, hey, congrats, Jay. You know this guy was a lockdown corner in Miami. One of the, one, one of the best cornerbacks that's ever come through this through this program. This is one of those guys that he should have been at Ohio State, man. But still, Jay Hayden, yeah. though. Hey, this guy made an impact in the very first game he ever played in the Notre Dame game and cornerback of the year award. I mean, this guy was locked down. Anytime you try throwing him the ball, I know Washington likes to throw around that, oh, we made a catch on it, bro. You only had like one or two catches the whole entire game. Jay Hayden was that good. Yeah, and then uh, that he's not a he's not one of the cornerbacks that's that's afraid to come up and make a tackle. He will he will he will come downfield and get somebody in the back well. the I like to kind of it's going to Got the tape about the roll for the boys. That started over to Wada. I like him in this big. Let's get it going. Start it over from the top. And just like I was saying, I mean, this is a guy that was adding to the lineage of great Miami cornerbacks, as we just saw there. He can even play and run. 
in the running game as well. Um, I'm pretty sure Ronnie Shanahan is still seeing him in his nightmares to this day. Um, but but the Condors don't really have a true number one cornerback. And in the division that they are playing, this is who you need. And I feel like this is a great pick for the Condors to get. Numa, to me, isn't that number one cornerback that they dra uh, drafted for. And I feel like Jay Hayden, along with Chris for Numa there, um, to me, this is just a great pick for the Condors. And I, I hate seeing it because now I got to go up against this guy. So I don't, I, I'm not the biggest fan of it. But on the unbiased approach, I, I think this is a great pick for the Condors. And Jay Hayden, he's a great guy to have. Kind of not your familiar Miami guy, too, because you know Miami guys, they, they like to talk. He's kind of the quiet one. He yeah, was the quiet one, you know. He, 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 he was different from, from our team personality, but still a, still a dog in the West, right? He was, he was balling. Yeah, that's very true. He, he, he honestly made a lot of picks that, I, that I'm like, how in the world did he make that? Just like we saw in the Notre Dame game, he was, yeah. And in the Oregon game that won Miami the uh, game here, um, but to me, this is this is a guy that he just comes in and he's ready to grind. He is ready to work. And anybody that has talked to him, you know, you just get the appreciation and the respect for him. As soon as you talk and get to know this guy, I think he is a class act through and through. And any team would be lucky to have him. And the Condors got a great one here. Yeah, definitely. Yes, sir. All right, one pick is in and over with. Now we move on to pick number 12, which is the Crusaders. This leaf with the Crusaders, I could see them going strong safety. This is the one pick where, <laughs> guys, if you need a strong safety, say bye-bye. Yeah. Man, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. After, after, if they go strong I, safety here, um, you might not see another one go for for a hot minute. <laughs> literally, because yeah. a lot of teams need a strong safety badly. And yeah, yeah definitely. I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna be honest. Um, there's not a lot of strong safety talent in this in this draft. I think it's, I think it's really, I think it's only two guys that are even eligible. Yeah, I think so. Um, so if somebody need to say strong safety after this, you probably going to be getting a corner or a free safety and just move them over because yikes. Now, is this where, you know, you take a gamble pick and take Cam Johnson here and move him to strong? I feel like if there's a free safety that you can pick and move him to strong, I think Cam Jan uh, Cam Jansen, Cam John Johnson is that guy. But when you have a true strong safe safety and Rodney Goins, I know they took Joshua Hexel here last year, but he's only a 71 overall. Um, you know, hasn't showed the commitment that we would like to see, you know, from Clemson and um, they need that help. This is another division that has loads of wide of wide receiver river talent. And I think they go with Rodney Goins here. Yeah, yeah that would be and, a good choice for them. And like you mentioned, Cam Johnson, he had he definitely has size to play strong safety six two two twenty five. 25. So if they if they feel like they want to take the, get that gamble, he might he might be the guy. But like you said, if you want to choose strong safety, going Rodney would not be a bad idea. I'm trying to look at who else they need. Um, they could possibly go right guard here and go get the right guard because they need. What's the age on um, Amir? Do you have the age on Sherman Youngblood at all? Uh, see, I got you. Got you. Or, um, Nade, if you do as well. I got you. Let's see. You said whoop, you said he's a right guard. Yeah, Sherman Youngblood, thirty-two years old. So 
Oh, they could go Sean Nix here from LSU. Yeah, that, that's a good possibility, too. Yep, 32 years old, last year of his contract. That wouldn't be a bad pickup. I think Sean Nix is another pick here. You know, yes, do they need strong safety talent? Yes, but when you have a elite, well, maybe not elite, but, you know, they have a great quarterback in Wakefield, and, you know, they need to shore up that offensive line, and they're they're going to lose young blood here soon. Yeah, so that wouldn't be a bad idea because I was looking at their – I was looking at their – O line, but I'm like they probably gonna go safety. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they went, if they went guard here. Yeah, guard or strong safety. All right, the pick is in. With the 12th pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the Los Angeles returning back uh, Crusaders selects Steve King Jr., oh. middle Ooh. linebacker from Miami. 76 overall, 87 hit power, 85 speed, and 83 tackling. You guys talked about the strong safety position, but the reason why I didn't go there Haxel's 22, and for anybody who knows my philosophy when it comes to safeties, definitely not the biggest necessity. I feel like that's the one position you can kind of shy away from getting in the first round unless he's, unless the player is above and beyond top level. And right. You don't need anything else. Okay. So the yeah. strong safety position, right. already got youth. You could still develop Haxel. Uh, he is a user, and sometimes he's still active, so you never know. Even without him being there, you know, we've seen low overall guys still turn out to be good safeties. Good example is uh, Jeffrey Colvin from the Thunderbirds. You know, he's 74 overall, yeah. 73 when he was there. Got to start last year and balled out now, 75, and his user was nowhere around. So, um, thing can happen there, uh, and that's how you can get by with those safeties. Uh, linebacker, big reason why they go here is you look at the middle linebacker position and you say they got, you know, they got Forbes, they got Nico, uh, they got Jenkins, Jen but um, the outside position, looking to try to use and move guys around uh to yeah. put him in that situation he's a fast linebacker um yeah and i feel like those three that I just hit power yeah those three that i just mentioned i think those are going to be the three linebackers to really lead this uh crusaders defense and potentially more than likely with this move go to a four three kind of defense and have those three in the middle no they got some other linebackers but they just haven't shown any flashes of anything to be able to really make an impact and with him being a user linebacker pretty sure he'll develop into a key piece also looking at that middle linebacker position as we talk about too with their top guy in dewan forbes he's 27 at an 83. solid but not but he's not going to, to not going to get much yeah better. so yeah, yeah i think yeah, steve king's the future for his team and this is a guy that even though when you look at his stats yes he didn't show up majorly in the stat but he showed his impact any time that he did. This is a guy that he didn't show his stats, but I've said this in the Discord v VCs that this is a guy that has potential, who has big time major potential to be a monster wherever he plays. And we saw it any time that he did nagging a play. This guy will take your head off. I mean, as you see, 87 hit power, 85 speed, 83 tackling. I mean, this guy was a force to be racking with. Uh, don't know if you'll rock the 64 in the pros, my guy, but... Yeah, he's not. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> you know? And I'm about to Plus put they... a rule out on old faces, because Morgan Freeman playing football still in LT. Yes, <laughs> he's oh, yeah. got the old faces. That's yeah, But that still... Man. That man came straight out the 70s, bro. <laughs> we got, he, he even got the, uh, the hand Got tape. the long sleeve. Got the neck pad and everything. The, this guy was a beast. He made an impact, I, I think, on the very first play um, of his collegiate career against the Fighting Irish. Um, I, he caused the fumble that allowed Luis Quintana to pick it up to run into the end zone. I mean, this is a guy who was a monster 
And just like I said, he didn't show up in the stat board very much, but he was an impact. And of course, when you play at Miami, it's hard to get the stats because there's so many key contributors, no matter yeah. where you are. Yeah. But this is a guy that you take because of his potential. And he has that potential of being like a Tyler Cage, being like yeah. a Jay, Jay Capri. That's his ceiling and you would definitely take him here next yeah, up we definitely. got the bison trade it back nice. bison is this where mac is making the pick no nah, i still make the picks <laughs> gotcha yeah. okay All right um i had the bisons going offensive lineman here i think they need a right tackle i think they go dj taylor here from tennessee yeah, let's see Bison's I'm trying to pull up their their roster here. You say right tackle? Yes. But um, Darius Donald, defensive tackle, is still on the board. I know they need a defensive tackle as well. Oh yeah, that's true. I'm gonna say um the thing about tack the right tackle is they both both their right tackles are twenty four. So even though he's overall, he might be able to that develop. That is true. He might be able to develop. So yeah, they might go. They might go somewhere else here. Maybe if let's see, let's look at that left guard right there. Seventy five. Who, who is that? Rick. Oh, they might go left guard. And this is where, you know, you maybe draft the right guard, Sean Nix, and move him to left guard as well. Yeah, because they're, they're starting left guard, 33 years old, 75 maybe overall. Ch that might maybe Chad maybe Chad Kutcher from Miami. You got Blackwell from Ohio State. You got some good left guard talent in this draft, too. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, another guy that hasn't come up the board, you still got Will Lowe from Michigan. Uh, Vince Lucas from Georgia, Casey McCoy, Louisville. Another some notable guys who played the guard, who played guard or just interior O line. So we might we might see them go guard here. Could see Jonathan Craig from North Carolina go here if you take a to the left to the left guard spot. Um, but we know. Torres has been talking about he needs op op offensive line help as well. So, well, Torres, if he get an all, and they, he he gonna he gonna be hyped because the Bisons they they have weapons. It's just a matter of can he get the ball out in time? Yeah, yeah. Because, do they still have Sam Ham Gusto? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. yeah, they still got Gusto. Like they still have Chamberlain, or was the Chamberlains in that trade or not? Um, I have to check. Let's see if I can find it. All right. Oh no, so it's like it was oh no, that's old that's old. All right, pick is in with the thirteenth pick of the first round of the RFL draft. The Oklahoma City Bison selects Will Lowe, offensive guard hey. from Michigan. Seventy six overall, ninety two strength, eighty run blocking and eighty uh run block power. I thought that was the same thing for a sec. No, it's not. <laughs> Those hey, are I, some I, good I, stats. Hey, yeah, great I stats. Called right it. There. I called it. Just, hey, Will Lowe. He, he was another guy. Opposite side of Wilcox. He was balling out there in Michigan. Because if you look at it, they already got Jawan Garrison from Florida last year in the draft. Um, with their second round pick, I think this is a great ad for them. Um, he was another player from Michigan, along with Matt Will, Will 
Wilcox, they were tough to get around. And I, I think this is a pretty good pick because we have been hearing from Torres that they need offensive line help big time because Torres, you know, he wants to get some more time to be able to throw the ball. And I, I think this is a pretty good pick for them. Yeah, looking yeah. at this, I mean, day one yeah. starter starts at a 76 overall. That puts him right he over. He would start, yeah. Yeah, that puts him Simon right Rector. over the 33-year-old agent, Simon Rector. Like Simon about Rector. To say. So, this is day one starter, young guy coming in at 21 years old. He's going to be able to develop with Torres. So uh, that line getting better with this pick. And we already seen, even though he's a generic Jawan Garrison, you know, he's already moved up to a 79. This is a guy that's going to de to develop pretty ni ni nicely. Go on, Amir. Sorry, buddy. Nah, you good. Uh, Hello. Only gave up two sacks on the season, both of them against Iowa. So just like with um, Wilcox, the team that Michigan faced, man. The fact that he only get he didn't give up any sacks against those big teams lets you know that they were that he was doing his thing out there. Yeah, that's really impressive. Miners on the clock. I, I want. I want to know. All who right, Don. <laughs> who was he blocking at Iowa? That that guy. That's kind of what I want to know. <laughs> at <laughs> Iowa, did you let around you? Sometimes the quarterback True. goes onto the ball too long and it counts as a sack. So that could. And if you remember, Smitty, K. Oh, yeah. McNamara had the issue where he would run out of the pocket and he was so slow. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, mm, the miners yes, here. Take it. No response yet. I had them going middle linebacker with Colo Ransom, but that, that was at the Pat? 23rd pick. There you Pat, go, Pat. You, you got to hop Hello, in the Pat. Discord. Yeah, they'll be in the Discord. In the Discord. You got to hop in the Discord. I think he's a but, word, but anyway, <laughs> uh, oh, got well, he just the Discord and yeah, if they didn't hear it, I was charged him four fifty. But uh, <laughs> so many I like how you're running down. Go there, go there. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm like, yo, read this. Go in the Discord. Go here. Are you, are you listening? Maybe I could to like the, to the tag. chat. Maybe I could like at him in the this chat. Everybody, yeah. tell, tell everybody. Me. Everybody saying he was sleeping and stuff. <laughs> Yo, if he was like this the whole time, bro, I'd have been crying. Well, he's um, in a chair. I, Is that what we think? That's what right. Happened? Our offensive hey, lineman of the chair. year in the NRC. Boy, put in too much work. He was tired. <laughs> <laughs> he was tired, man. Boy, don't get on the top 100 for no reason, man. Put in work. Still... Trying to go look at the miners. Yeah, man, that that completely threw me off with Pat coming in. Hold on, let's see. <laughs> yeah, where where are the miners on here? Okay, I like what Kai Cash just said. They're almost kind of a team where they can just take the best available player. But you know how Dunn loves getting guys to replace anyone that's on a walk year or anyone that has a bunch of reloads. We saw it last year that they drafted three guys who are high in the reloads and everything. I had them going middle linebacker, trying to look at their offensive side. Yeah, I mean, they're... Yes. They're pretty well stacked on the offensive side. To me, I feel like they go on the defensive side of the ball. Middle linebacker talent. We already saw Garrett Evans go. I think they still run a 3-4. They got Jediah in the draft. Um, and you, I mean, in the trade, they got Killian Bain from the draft last year. Their deep defensive line is really good. Trying to look at the available middle linebackers. Maybe Pat Forney here from Florida. Maybe Dylan Lewis from Oklahoma, not the quarterback. Dylan Lewis, the middle linebacker from Oklahoma. He's also another a a a active community guy, and we know how much Coach Dunn loves his active community guys. Uh, not a word yet. Outside of what you said, I'm not seeing too many. I done, you hear my like, boy? Done. Where you at, man? Hey, uh, miners, make sure. Uh, I see the miners are in here heavy. Hit your coach up, man, because sometimes he'd be, he'd yeah, be veering off and he'd probably sit there having a latte with somebody right now. Them and Pat. Them and Pat were having naps. <laughs> 
Let's see. Um, maybe the, maybe the. Wait, what was that? Huh. Was it, was it right? Or they right did. Or? They did trade TJ Metcalf away today, as we did Pretty see. In, okay, is this in the um? Where'd you put it, done? But they already got Connor Jameson, though. Like they already got Connor Jameson, though. Could they could they go line because I see Vinny Cotton, twenty eight, maybe twenty eight, seventy eight overall, and he's it's no telling what's gonna go on with hey, him. Hey Fry, um, tell him to send it again because I don't see a DM from him. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't have anything in the DM from him. Goodman. They could go O line, because Griffin Goodman, their starter, 84 overall, but he's 33. At left okay, he is so calling our pick. Okay, so he's doing a phone call with the guy he's picking. Ooh. So obviously it's a user. Okay. So that oh, means he's user. doing that. So it's a user. Yeah. I, I, so. I think, I think they go Dylan Lewis here. Dylan Lewis. I mean, that could happen. You think they go? I mean, they got all kinds of linebackers already. Or I'm, Darius Donald from Oklahoma, maybe. I mean, true, he's still on the board. Yeah, so that threw that threw my O line guess out the window because O line is just number generics pretty much outside of Fredo. And Fredo and Fredo is like the only one. Um, and, yeah, he already got chosen or picked. Yeah, so so it's a user. I think they go with. Um, Can you tell him nah. to send it to you guys because I I don't have a message from him yet. Let I me message start him. A timer soon. That boy better hurry up. <laughs> Gotta shoulda shoulda told said to sent the message then did the call. You know they traded Metcalf away, so Yeah. Okay, we do gotta pick that. in. Okay. Oh, got it in? Nice. Okay. See, she said they are uh, probably having a staring contest. Yeah. <laughs> CC is crazy, man. Bro, CC, CC been on one tonight, man. I've been he's looking at this man. Day. Every this day, man. he's on one. See, this man been wilding in the chat. All right. Is it? With the 14th Who's going pick, to the sack? With the 14th pick in the first round of the RFL draft, the Sacramento Miners selects A. John Grant, a wide receiver Ooh. from USC. Wow. 73 overall, All right. 93 okay. speed, 86 change of direction, and 83 spectacular catch. I and, was not expecting this. Go, go on, sorry. Oh, no, uh... Pat, I don't know if he's here. Can somebody send him a message? He's oh, he's in the wrong. Man. Yeah, he's in the wrong. Uh, yeah. He, Discord man. chat. Bro, you got to check. Is he listening to the draft? This man, what is he doing? I don't know what's going on. I know yeah. they got a highlight tape, so let me. Um, That's it. Yeah, he's got a highlight he, tape. There it is. Yeah, I told him to send it to you, Smitty, because he was asking me about it. And I was like, send it to Smitty. Jeez. So. Alright. See that let's see. <laughs> that that I got that, that call sound. I'm like that crap came in loud. Um let's look at this. let's look at these miners receivers. So you know they got Pavel Frederick. They got Pavel Frederick out here. Let me pull these and pull the the depth chart back up as well. Let's 
Alright, here's a look at those allies. Ah, bagging. Okay, AG. Ooh. Yeah, you want to talk about a guy that Cinco loved throwing the ball to and got himself a teammate this year that didn't blame him for everything. And that is Jeezy Grant, man. This guy was a speedster, was everywhere for USC and was a big reason reason why Sink go through for 35 touchdowns this year. And this is a guy that I enjoyed to watch, man. Like he is a talent. Hey, there we go. We got Pat up here now. He's, he's here. in the building. Hey, well, I, okay. Um, yeah, I, I can only talk to you guys through the phone apparently. How you doing? What's going on? Oh, it wasn't working on your laptop and just trying to... Did I miss anything? Uh, you missed a lot, but hey, at the end of the day, we're Hello? almost halfway. So you got a long it's good time to so get back and get your input on oh, it. Oh, okay. it's yes. nice to be here. Why don't, why don't I take this off? Okay. Well, we can't see you at the moment because the right, highlights so are running. What's your that, thoughts uh, right now on the minors? I missed a good chunk of the first mm -hmm. round. Well, yeah. I didn't miss it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah it's thoughts on this pick right now for the minors, okay. picking up A.J. on Grant. Okay, so let's see. Who's on? Who's on deck here? Can you, can you hear me, uh, Pat? Oh. Pat, can you hear you Smitty? Take, I don't think he can. I no, not at all. He can't not even hear older. you. No, he can hear not everybody even else, older. but not me. Let me see. Uh, got me muted there, Pat. I heard. I heard that. <laughs> oh, you heard it? I heard what? I see you on the call, or the Zoom call. Hey, man. So you said you, you can't hear Smitty. Uh, no, I can't. I got to see what's going on there. Uh, check and make Are sure. Are you in the dis tell him, Discord? Tell him to make sure he yes. doesn't have me muted. That's the only way I can. Because I can hear him. That seems to be the only way I can talk, so yeah. Yeah, he said make, make sure you don't have him muted, uh, Pat. Have you, who muted it, Smitty? Let me see here. Because sometimes it could be random. Uh, maybe I do. I don't know. Yeah. Doesn't think oh, so. Oops, my. Oops, I can't. Oops. I can see why the miners went receiver here because Buck Oldbridge, 30 years old, Kendall Booker, 28. Those are their top two guys, so not not a bad pickup. Yeah, and he's a user too, so he can like improve faster. Okay. I still uh, don't know. Like I, I mean, they drafted Connor Jameson here, though. Like I like he's. I mean, I like Grant. I think he's a stud of a player, but I don't know. Like I feel like. But then again, we did say that the Miners could go best available here. I like still feel like they have enough wide receiver talent in a way that, you know, because you took Connor Jameson last year. And then, unless you're, like, trying. I was going to say, yeah. then they also took Pablo Frederick uh, not too long ago as well. So, eh. Yes, now, Buck Pat? is getting older. Know. I don't know, man. No, can't. <laughs> I can see why they did it, but it is. I, I do think it's a little questionable. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, I wasn't expecting that. That honestly, unless they think this is like one of those where they know they're gonna be shipping off Buck soon, you know, and then they'll have their three guys for the future. Maybe you know. Yeah, maybe they'll I don't know. trade them away. Well, do we know how many years Buck has on his contract? Uh, um, he's got three. Oh. Um, He's still tradable, I, but uh, at, at the I, age I of yeah. age, anyone willing to yeah. actually pick him up? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not He's sure. I'm going to be I honest guess. here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be honest with the first round pick here. I feel like you could have gotten somebody else. Like... Yeah. This is not to throw shade at Grant. I think he's a great player and he's going to be a stud. But in my opinion, I feel like the Miners had a more pressing need on the defensive side of the ball. Unless they got a plan, a plan that they're going to trade away Buck or anything, I, I don't. I, I think to me, this is the first questionable pick of the draft. And honestly speaking, really looking at Buck's situation, who's really going to want to trade for him? Like, yeah, that's true. Not, no shade at no shade at Buck because he's a good receiver, but twenty eight years old, three or not twenty eight, thirty years old, three years left on his contract. I don't. It, it's not really a long term thing that I would see somebody re really taking. Because just like we were saying, they already took Pavel Frederick in the season seven draft. They took Connor Jameson in the season eight draft. I mean, unless this is kind of like. You know, you maybe draft him for 
that depth of maybe in two or three years for him to be a monster, you know, as a long-term plan. But I, I feel like you draft guys at long-term plans in the second or third round, not in the first round, in my opinion. Yeah, that's true. Almost if you're like, I don't know. We do have the Aviators on the board, and their pick is in. Hey. Really quick, I think um, this is going to be where they go get Rodney Goins because they need a strong safety badly, in my opinion. With the 15th pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the St. Louis Aviators selects DJ Taylor, offensive tackle. From Good Tennessee. pick. 75 overall, 94 strength. Good stats. 82 impact blocking and 78 pass block power. And he is a day one starter. Again, the same kind of situation as Bice, as the Bisons. Same age as their aging lineman. 33 is Travis Blaylock. He's a 74 overall. DJ Taylor coming in just an overall higher than him. Of course, with that youth at 31. Was, that's not youth. Uh, that is 21. not youth. <laughs> that I was 21. like, Smitty, are you sure that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, at 21, that is going to be uh, a good pick. Of course, we already know the offensive line hasn't been too great for uh, the Aviators. Um, with the beast yeah. of the quarterback in which they've got with Marquise Washington, you add Marquise this you Washington. to that line. And the run game with Kingston Kinney, you know, he can de develop into a beast of an offense that they already have right there um, in, in St. Louis. It looks like... I was looking at I was looking at their depth chart. I was like, that could be a spot that they would that they would go because. And this is a guy that they draft. Oh, sorry. Go on, um, here. Uh, yeah. So, like, seventy-four overall, thirty-one years old, and I don't. I, they that was a, that's a that's a need for them, and like, and not only that, one thing you gotta protect Marquise's blind side because I'm pretty sure he is a right-handed quarterback, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you gotta protect his blind side, and that's a good pickup to do that. Yeah, this is a guy that Marquise Washington needs to protect him. I mean, he plays in a difficult division as it is. We saw that last year with Mark Marquise. I mean, especially when they played against the Bulldogs last last year, it just felt like no matter what, Marquise Washington was just getting bullied by that defensive line by the Bulldogs last year. And I know they're not in the same division, but it was one of those games where it just kind of proved that they needed offensive line help big time. And Travis Blaylock, he's not getting any younger. I thought DJ Taylor was the best offensive tackle in this draft by far. And you can instantly move him to the left tackle spot. Um, six foot five, 315 pounds. This is a absolute specimen of a player at the left tackle spot. And he's a great pick for the Aviators. All right. Yeah. Halfway through the draft. And it's the Brooklyn Bulls now on the clock. Brooklyn the Bulls. Bulls. Another Ooh. user pick here. You guys. Your coach, let's see. Um, I had the Bulls going cornerback in this draft. Um, maybe they go Xavier Spriggs here, maybe they go JJ Harris, Dalen Mitchell. Corner wouldn't it be a bad idea because they do have, like, from what I see here, they have. Three guys over the age of 30. Uh, Witherspoon, oh no, Witherspoon, 30. Um, Beard is 32, and Golston is 31. So, that wouldn't be a bad idea. And then, it was like, oh. Golston has two years left on his deal. Beard one, Witherspoon one. So, cornerback wouldn't be a bad <laughs> pickup. All right. And we have. The 16th overall pick in for Brooklyn. With the 16th pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the Brooklyn Bulls selects Glenn Holcomb. Tight end from Miami. 76 overall. Was not expecting speed, that. Wow. 81 catching and 78 break tackle. 
Tight end. That's not good. <laughs> I was that. That's a shocker there. I wasn't expecting tight end. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Their top guy. See, like Cedric Hart. I believe that's what it says. And Ben yeah. Hartman and Hayden and Gene Charles. Yeah. So okay, Cedric Cedric Marks, thirty two years old. Hartman, twenty nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Now. I, I was like, wait, tight yeah. end. Okay. All right. But you want to know how hold much hold. of a beast this guy is? A hundred and forty three catches. A hundred and forty three guys. That's Marvin. as much as Marvin. Har- that is as much as Marvin Harrison had in the NFL as Michael Thomas did in the NFL. And this guy did it in 14 games. That's how much of a beast this guy is. He was a safety net for Dorian Chavis the whole entire year. And I think this is a great pick. But do they need a tight end? Like, is is that what they really need? I mean, it it is a need that I'm I'm seeing because, like like I said, uh, Marks is... 32 and that's their top guy they're like Hartman follows behind him yeah Hartman follows behind him at on the depth chart and he is 29 no yeah he's 29 so they have guys who are old and this would be a young guy to pick up I know Miami just had the night that they want to forget for the rest of their college series lives after last <laughs> night, but this is a night that they are showing that out of any teams, you know, whether it's Ohio State or Baylor or Alabama, Miami has also been one of those teams that produces first round talent. And this is the fourth guy we have now seen out of Miami in the top 16, 17 picks. Like, this just goes to show how talented Miami has been for the last few years and why they have the second most wins ever in the college series with this pick right here. We have the Black Knights. Black Knights. On the board. They have two first round picks. CC, yes, I know Georgia produces talent as well. Oh my gosh. Yes, <laughs> Georgia produces talent. Oh my gosh. Sorry that I forgot you. That's why I don't like you, Peacock. <laughs> Man. All right, so let's see. Right <laughs> guard. Right guard. Georgia does produce talent, CC. Let's see. What's that? What's this overall over here? I can't. I can't see that. It's, it's too small. Sixty. Like that says sixty-eight. Or no. Let's see the Black Knights. Well, we know somebody needs offensive line help, so you know he's been saying it for three years now. Oh wait, they don't even they, have, already, they don't even have a right guard. That's a left guard playing at right guard. So I oh. say, oh, I this say, is where you get. Uh, this is where you go get Sean Nix from LSU or Jonathan Craig from UNC. Mm. All right. All right. Let me make sure I got the pick. Yeah, here's Smitty. Yeah, I, I say yep. they're. I think they're going guard here. Smitty, you remember talking? All right. With the 17th pick of the first okay. round of the RFL draft, the London Black Knights selects Vince Lucas, right guard Ooh. from Georgia. 75 right, overall, 87 strength. 84 impact blocking and 79 run blocking. Didn't have anybody at the position. Now they got. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a, a, that's a this great is another cool. guy. This is another guy that the Georgia Bulldogs, you know, they also produce a lot of great talent, you know, in the college series, along with Ohio State, Miami, Alabama. The Georgia Bulldogs is another one of those schools. Their second first round pick. And Vince Lucas was an absolute stud for them the whole entire year. Uh, Jaden Young, he didn't really let anyone touch Jaden Young the whole entire year. And I like this pick because they honestly did not have a right guard at all, just like you were saying. (laughs) And you know, I think back to last year, right, when 
you know, they traded away two big top players in order to have this position to get two first round draft picks. And, you know, they went and got those offensive playmakers in Amari Harris and Irving last year. They couldn't really capitalize on the offensive linemen based off of the positioning they had to work with. But now having these two first round draft picks, you go ahead and get a young offensive lineman, 21 years old, day one starter. And you got a whole nother pick to look forward to. This helps out that line up front. We saw them do better than expected last year, man. And, you know, we couldn't believe they had the season they had. Um, now actually playing all 17 games, can they do the same thing? You don't know, but at the end of the day, the Black Knights uh, definitely needed offensive lineman help, and they've got it right here in Vince Lucas. Yeah, Vince And this Lucas. is a guy, yeah, go on. Uh, let's say Vince Lucas gave up one, and he was, he gave up one sack this season, and he was almost a, a, a second guy who wouldn't have given up a sack in the college series along with Wilcox if it wasn't for the Peach Bowl. He gave up a sack in the Peach Bowl against USC, and meaning from weeks 1 through 13, once again, he okay, did not give up a single microphone. sack. So props to him, man. Did anyone hear, hear me? Can you hear me, Pat? Pat, I can, I can, hear, can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. Finally. Yeah. Yay! Hey. Hey. Pat in the building. <laughs> hey. Well, three hours later. Yes, doing great. Yeah. How was your nap? How was your nap? I have kids. I was not taking a nap. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about the so I will not take this slander. Yeah, and, and I look forward to all of you having children, too. That'll be great. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. Okay, now let me see if I can let me see if I can catch up on everything that I missed here in the past three hours. So hold on. Yeah, yeah. Make sure um you turn you turn off your video on Discord and turn it on on Zoom so that way the the chat and stuff can see you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to turn the volume way up. There we go. Did I even change the pick? What pick is this? Eighteen. Oh yes. Pick Eighteen. Okay. And this is the Orlando Sentinels. Sentinels. Oh, Coach. Oh, Sentinels. well, not Coach Tor anymore. The owner's so Tor. Wait. Yeah. Coach Q, oh, Trauma, all oh, them guys. Who else out there on that? Uh, Brad, y'all better. Y'all saying I look like everybody tonight. <laughs> they done called me Duke Dennis. Now they call me Miles Garrett. Guys, we. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Garrett, that's not even close. Who said that? I, I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing the Miles Garrett here. <laughs> Amir, I think you need to lift some more weights if you want to look like Miles. Brett, <laughs> that, that man, uh, yeah, I don't know about Miles Garrett, Brett. Yeah, Miles Garrett is way left. That's crazy coming from CC. He usually hits on the jokes, but not that one. See. See, it's like CC and Perk said that. Give him a bell, Smitty. There it is. Nah, I can, I can see Duke Dennis. Duke Dennis, oh, I can see, but. Yeah, Duke, man, he, he kind of got you with the dude. Who hit you with the dude? Uh, I can't read the chat. Dude, everybody, oh, everybody. Darius. Everybody had to begin that stream. As soon as they saw it, like, that boy got Duke Dennis on the stream. <laughs> Denny. <laughs> who, who we got picking the signals? Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> I will yeah. say it was Perk who actually said it first. Cece yeah. just agreed with him. So it was actually Perk who said the Miles Garrett first. Yeah. Okay. Cece uh, is always yeah. the one. He is like the guy that gets caught second when the first guy did it and he tries to like do it, but he gets caught and the first guy doesn't. He's like, hey, man, it's I ain't the one who said it. I couldn't follow up right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let's see. Send me. Send me. <laughs> All right, we got Pat in the building now. Hey, All right. hey with the Clemson gear on, boy. Yeah. <laughs> OG right here. He got vast knowledge. I was talking about earlier of the RFL from each level, college, pros. Pat finally on. Look at the excitement. <laughs> I got vast. Oh, hold on! I got vast knowledge of everything except what's happened so far in the oh, past yeah, two hours. Yeah, except for that, but uh, <laughs> except for guys, that, yeah, we're doing good. Guys are beasts everywhere else within the community, man. Oh my gosh! Well, oh, wow. Okay, so it looks like several of the guys the explorers were interested in drafting are gone, which is not a surprise because we're picking twenty seventh. So. Yeah. And hey, that's uh nine picks away, buddy. So. That's, it is. Yeah, I better yeah. I better come up with. 
I better come up with something quickly. Wow. Oh, yeah, the right. pick is in Who here. do we think tore really quick? Um, I think they go... They either go offensive line or cornerback here. I think Chad Kutcher at the guard at the left guard spot could be a need. Kenny Blackwell from Ohio State. But also, there's still some good cornerbacks on the board with um, Dalen Mitchell, Xavier Spriggs, J.J. Harris. You still got a lot of good cornerbacks on the board, and I know these Sentinels need a cornerback as well. All right. Yeah, I'm so... Thinking. With the 18th yeah. pick in the first round of the RFL draft, the mm. Orlando Sentinels selects. Mm. Oh, that's the wrong button. Oh. JJ Harris, cornerback from Baylor. 73 okay. overall, 93 speed, 75 catching, and 72 man coverage. Hey, that's the that's right. pickup right there. 93 they might go speed. with the corner. That's a good. That's yeah, a that's good a really pick good up, pick. Man. You know, let's see. They got three cornerbacks on their roster. Let's see if he's got a highlight tape. I don't see anything. Yeah, so they got three cornerbacks on their roster. Uh, Wilkins is thirty, Mayberry is thirty-three, and then Atkinson is twenty-five. So that 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 pick makes a lot of sense, man. JJ Harris, he was a he was a great guy um, over there at Baylor. And honestly, this is a guy that kind of fits like of what Tor likes too. You know, he kind of fits in that like flame mold, not as rowdy as flame, but JJ Harris. You know, he he kind of has yeah. that chip on his shoulder. Yeah. You know, kind of has that chip on his shoulder. We all know how the feel about him and stuff like that. We know he got a little bit rowdy, but this is a guy that has a chip on his shoulder. He's ready to play. And he's ready to prove himself. I think this is a pretty good fit as far as like a personality wise of what the Sentinels want. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was like JJ Harris, three picks on the year. Like a, three picks, 11, 11 pass, uh, 11 pass deflections. Hey, dude was strapping up on this side of the ball. And he was act he actually would finish second in the team. In pass deflections behind Colo Ransom, who we also saw go earlier here tonight. Because let's see, last year this is a great guy that they have to pair up, you know, with Eric Hogan, you know, because they drafted Eric Hogan last year from Ohio State with their first round pick. Uh, they drafted Aiden Phillips. They also got. Um, Who's uh, Jay Morris, right? The other strong safety that they have. No, um, I'm I'm forgetting the strong safety that they have Which over team? there for the Sentinels. Strong oh, safety. Like Eric Hogan. Blue. Blue, yeah. Blue Berry Hill. Blue Berry Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Blue, Blue uh, Berry Hill. <laughs> yep. So this is a good guy to pair up with that secondary that they have for the Sentinels. And they're getting pretty young on that secondary side. And, you know, that's kind of been an issue for them, as we've seen throughout the years. We know Tor likes to run that 4-6 type of defense and everything. So I feel like this is a pretty good fit for what the Sentinels are wanting to run. Yeah. Next up, yeah, we have the Monarch. Monarchs, man. Are oh, they in New England oh. now? New England Monarchs, right? New England Monarchs. That's crazy. New England Monarchs. So I, so I had the Monarchs here. Um, this is a computer pick still too, right, Smitty? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I had them going defensive tackle and everything. And um, Darius Donald is still on the board, guys. Darius Donald, to me, the best defensive tackle in this draft. And I think they need de a defensive tackle big time. And I think they go Darius Donald here. Or even Miles Brock from your school, Pat, from Clemson. Oh, yeah. Um, what, why? What, what, are you implying that I'm looking at Miles Brock? Because... I mean, we, we, I mean I, I, we haven't gone into this. The Explorers are pretty much just looking for the best player available at this point. And I was talking about the, the Monarchs that they well, could okay. go with the defensive tackle I know. here. Okay. They, they, um, um, they could use it. it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, they can use one. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm pulling up depth charts on my phone if ever, but for those people who are asking in the chat. <laughs> Might need to pull the glasses Yeah, out. everyone's oh, yelling at it. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's like, why are you on your phone, Pat? He trying to look and see what's <laughs> going on. I'm looking up the depth chart. <laughs> he trying to see what the explorers oh. can pick up. <laughs> Okay, I've got a pretty good uh, idea of what's left for the explorers to pass. Uh, there, there aren't that many. <laughs> no, uh, I'm not playing Angry Birds, Hodge. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing Angry Birds during the draft. <laughs> that'll be well, after. But you know, time. that'll be after. <laughs> well, they're playing Candy Crush, bro. <laughs> Killing it too. Oh, we already broken. No, no, this this draft thing is eating into my Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> um, another possible spot they could go is outside linebacker on the right side. Um, yeah, they, more, this is where they go, George George Chamberlain here. Maybe Ooh, because um, let's see, they yeah. have a they have their left they have a left outside linebacker playing over there, and then their the right backer who is over there is uh, twenty eight years old. Pearson Warner, seventy-seven overall. So oh, maybe rash. they get, maybe they get a guy that. Pick is in, with the nineteenth mm -hmm. pick of the first. Mm -hmm. Bad one. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm just trying to help, man. So. With, with the nineteenth pick in the first round of the RFL draft, the New England Monarchs selects. Darius Donald, defensive hey. tackle, okay. Oklahoma. Finally, Oklahoma. Overall, 90 strength, 79 block shedding, and 79 power moves. And this guy he does have a highlight tape, I'm sure of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and oh, gosh, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one strength, that had a highlight. Man. That is so good to have. Oh, my god. 90 gosh. strength, man. That boy on the yeah. road, man. That's a, that boy. <laughs> 90 strength he's going to be pushing some guys over um hey. as we saw from the monarchs last year i mean they got to the playoffs and everything even though they had a tough first round against the thunderbirds i feel like this is a guy that they will need um because they couldn't get to lc3 a lot in that game and the thunderbirds just kind of had their way with them um darius donald watching him the whole entire year he made an impact immediately for the Oklahoma Sooners joining in there with Austin Sanders and Dylan Lewis. Um, I, I think this is a great pick. And as you see here, I mean, the guy was just, he just was a monster. Almost got yeah. in there. And, uh, yes. Almost, almost. You let that little short, short guy catch it. Go. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I mean, the, the guy was a stud. To me, he's the best defensive tackle that was on the board. Uh, for him to fall, I honestly think this is kind of a steal yeah, for a the bit. Monarchs because yeah, I, so, yeah. I was I not expecting him to fall this far because I had them going with Miles Brock here, but that was because I didn't think yeah. Darius Donald would still be here. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I, I didn't expect that the Monarchs would be the first team to go defensive tackle. No. That would be yeah, he, that's a that's a steal, man. That's yeah, definitely a steal to me. Uh, let's see. Because Miles Brock, he's a great defensive tackle too. But Darius Donald, I thought showed that he was the best defensive tackle out of this draft class. And yeah. for him to fall all the way down here, I think the Monarchs got themselves a steal. I mean, 90 strength, 79 block shedding. This is also a user player where he's going to be able to upgrade his guy. He's already a 76 overall. I'm sure he'll probably have the star a dev as well. I know Smitty kind of spoke about the whole star a devs thing. This is a guy that I think that will get it. And he's going to make a immediate impact for the New England Monarchs of when they play. Yeah. yeah. And like, like we were talking, 50 tackles on the year, five TFLs, 11 sacks. That's a, hey, that's a great season, man. especially for a D tackle. Yeah, for and real, yeah. I want to know one thing, though. If we had saw the combine, what was this man's bench press? Because 90 strength. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. A lot. Now these San Diego Red Dragons. Red Dragons. 
So this is a team here that I I see them either going. Now this is another team that don't they need a strong safety as well? Um, Who has been taken yet? They. I, I, would say, I, would one, say they need that. I would say they might go strong safety because this is where Ronnie I, Goins could could probably go. Yeah, yeah Alex that's a possibility. Stone. Alex Stone is 33 years old, and mm -hmm. his backup Russell. I'm not even try that last name. Though. You mean it? You mean it? Yep. You mean it? You mean it? Yeah, you mean it? Yeah, you mean it? That boy, he's 29. So, hey, hey. Well, this, might go this could also safe. be a, but this could also be a spot for Miles Brock. Let's not kid ourselves. True. You know, I also Brock? think they so need a middle. I I I I, I <laughs> think I think this is. Right, I, I think this is a middle linebacker could go here too. This, you know, maybe Dylan Lewis here. Yeah, that could be a possibility. Maybe. Dylan Lewis, yeah. Um, uh, Cujo. Only thing is, he's oh, he he's he's up. he's already gone. Well, he's gone. No, oh. then, well, then definitely Dylan Lewis there. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Wheatley is Wheatley been picked? Only thing no. about um, only thing okay. about middle linebacker. Wait, yeah. The only thing about middle linebackers, they have Don Watts already, who is 22. Yeah, well. Is it Don Watts an outside linebacker, I thought? Um, they have him listed as middle on here. Oh, he's middle. Oh, all right. But, oh, they run a 3-4. I'm pretty sure they ran a 3-4 last year. Uh, it, okay. As from what I'm seeing, yeah, they run a 3-4. Defensive tackle, strong safety. I don't know. Maybe they can get another. Maybe they can get a guard. You can never get enough good offensive linemen, really. True. Sean Nix from LSU is still on the board. Jonathan Craig from North Carolina is still on the board. That's another guy. You got Jed Kutcher from Miami. Oh, you got uh, Javier Wheatley from Ohio State. Wheatley, you got yeah. um, Kenny Blackwell, the guard from Ohio from Ohio State as well. I still think they either go Dylan Lewis, but I think what Amir brought up with the age at the strong safety spot, but they also have a pick at 24. Maybe you go the middle linebacker here. You wait a few spots and go get the strong safe safety at 24. I don't know, but I feel like that is a position of need and they possibly go with Rodney Goins here. Right. And it looks like in the chat, uh, Very the logical. coach, yeah, let's see what happens. They said they moved to a 4-3 this year. So, so Miles Brock, Kenny Blackwell, or Rodney Goins would have to be my prediction. All right. Pick is in. And with the right. 20th pick of the first round in the RFL draft, the San Diego Red Dragons selects Zion Waddles. Free safety Whoa. from Baylor, oh. 71 overall, 90 speed, 98 jumping, and 98 78 jumping. zone coverage. Yeah. And wow. I was I was looking at that free safety yeah, spot, but I'm like, they probably, I, I was looking at the free safety, and I'm like, I don't know if they would go there because they had Rock Zion. Lee. They had Rock yeah. Lee who was, uh, who was 22, so I was I'm surprised by that. So maybe they put Zion at the strong safety spot here. I had him going actually at 24 to the Red Dragons just four picks earlier. Um, but okay. All right. Zion Waddles, he made an impact play in the Big 12 title game against Oklahoma. Um, he got a pick six as well in one of the games. I'm trying to remember which game it was. I know I messaged him. But this is a also a great community guy, you know, Zion Waddles. He loves throwing the penguin out, you know, and everything whenever he makes a play. And um, as we see from his highlights, I mean, he was definitely a part of the great Baylor defense and everything. And Zion, man, congrats, man. You're going to be a red dragon. But... This was a pick that I had in my mock draft that this is a guy that they'll take to transfer to the strong safety spot. Is that what we think he's going with here? Because they took Rock. Yeah, might be. Might be. Rock Lee yeah. is, a, is a hard hitter too, so either one could probably put at the strong, the other at the free. So. 
I think Rock is probably more of the strong safety type then. I think Rock is probably more the strong safety because with Zion's size, he he's definitely on the lighter side. And I think Rock weighs a little bit more than Zion does. I, I think this is a spot that he probably goes at the strong safety spot where Rock moves to strong and you have Zion playing free. Yeah, like Rock Lee is 204, 74 inches tall. How many is that? That's, how many is that at feet? That's 6'2". 6'2"? Like, six two? Six two? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 6'2", 204, he's probably going to move over to the strong safety spot and leave Zion over there at the safety position. Alright. But man, that 90, 98 jumping, that man jumping yeah. out the gym. That boy. Yeah. <laughs> Seen those Dave you... Chappelle suggestions? It's like, nah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did the five fingers say to the face? Oh, man. Somebody was like, <laughs> <laughs> I still think, I don't know. In my opinion, I feel like if you were needing a true strong safety, why wouldn't you go get Rodney Goins here, though? Mm, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I don't. I mean, I, w I was high on you know I was high on Zion Waddles even though the Explorers obviously don't need a free safety because the man knows how to stack relays. That is true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's there's a method behind his. I'm, I know Coach Davis. There's a method behind the madness. Let's see All who's right. next, next here. Next we got 21. This is the Portland. Well, now the uh, not in Portland anymore. I think Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Cincinnati Hogs. Yeah, they're not it. called the River Hogs anymore either. Oh, they're man. just the Hogs. The Hogs. They don't have rivers in Cincinnati. Oh, they, they do, uh, I think. They probably do. I have to look it up. Just gonna be the the Cincinnati Pumbas. Yeah, no. So that that ain't it. That ain't it. Uh. I had them going center here in my mock draft, but obviously with Fredo gone, yeah. they, I think they need all offensive line talent, though. When I looked at their roster, maybe you draft Sean Nix here and switch him to the center role. Hmm. You can do that. Maybe. Let's see. Um, let's see, I'm going to have to pull this oh, up. Spe yeah, speaking of, teams that need a, speaking of teams that need a strong safety, uh, let's... let's uh, the, yeah, there there's like a, there five or one. six teams. There's like yeah. five or six teams this, that though, need them. Uh, for the, they can the move Hogs Strickland over offense, the yeah, that's that's what it, he's not. He's actually supposed to be over there, but he's listed as a free. So Strickland okay. is technically their strong safety. Okay. Okay. Well, but I do know there is like there's like five or six teams that need a strong. Let me right. let me look, let me move this over to my. Uh, you know, maybe a pass rusher. I wouldn't say no to that. Uh, this is wait. Do they need a defensive end or a defensive tackle, Pat? Do you know? I think defensive uh, end. But, uh, um, let me look at defensive ends that are still the, on the board. The, the, There's got to be a couple. You still yeah. have Seth Brewer. That's on the board. Uh, Ken Tana is still on the board. Derek Hatcher from Michigan is still on the board. Um, people saying the suspense, man. <laughs> I know Washington is watching. Oh, yeah. Oh. That is no, that's not right. the right team. Let's do this again, Whoa. shall we? Hey. Do, 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 hey. What? We're, we're, oh, I mean, Hogs, that's going to be easy. Hogs pick, is it? Let's see. All right. And with the 21st pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the Cincinnati Hogs selects Casey McCoy, center, Ooh. Louisville. All right. 76 okay. overall, 88 okay. strength, 81 run blocking, and 81 Ass blocking. Oh, yeah, That's a good pickup. Yeah, you know, that guy from Ohio State. I think he's been drafted eight or nine times tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Corbin Coase has been drafted a lot tonight. Hey, yeah, we're gonna get the cards right. What do we, we, hey, but what do we tell y'all though? It's gonna be a lot of defense. It's gonna be a lot of O line, man. 
Hey, no, this is a guy that Steve Washington was a big reason why Steve Washington was the won the running back of the year award. Now, they didn't have the great quarterback play at Louisville. They still had a great interior line to block for, and Casey McCoy was a big reason for that for the Louisville Cardinals as well. Um, they needed a center bad, a, a center big time. I, I know that there's concerns about the cornerback position and, you know, is he the guy, you know, but if they still want to see if this is the guy, let's get him some offensive line help and see how he does. Hmm. Like pick. Right. Not a bad pick. Not a bad pick, man. I mean, 88 strength, 81 run blocking, 81 pass blocking. Those are some really good stats to have as a rookie center coming into the RFL. And yeah, man. 20 and now on a pick 22, which are the Elks. So the so Elks I had projected... I had the Elks projected to go Javier Wheatley here, but Miles Brock is still on the board too. So I think the Elks go defensive tackle here in the draft. Yeah, uh, let's see. Willie Zellner, I believe this one. Yeah, 32 years old, 75 yeah. overall. Hopkins, who is the, the second guy over there, he's 26. So they might get a they might get a D tackle there to um take over they're probably i wouldn't be surprised if they honestly i wouldn't be surprised if they let zellner go um if they get a d tackle here especially since Mal, like you said miles brock is still out there javier wheatley is still out there like they need a defensive tackle big time in my opinion but let me go to their depth chart you also, you, also got, you also got angelo michaels from georgia that is true, yep. Yeah. Angelo Michaels from Georgia. I know some GA guys in the chat probably going to be happy if they see that guy go here. Um, Do we know the age of their right tackle, Crosby Eddins? Uh, um, right tackle, Crosby. Crosby? Let's see. Uh, he is 25. Okay, so he's still young there. The right guard, Bradley Rulins is 76. Jason Wheeler, their left guard is a 75. All right. Yeah. Pick is in. And with the second, uh, with the 22nd pick in the first round of the RFL draft, Salt Lake City Elks selects Dylan Lewis, middle linebacker oh. from Oklahoma. Wow. Good pick. 93 right, hit good. power. 87 tackling and 85 speed. Wow. Man, I, okay. That's good. Really oh, good. okay. Now, okay Smitty is trying to get me killed in the middle, man. Come on. <laughs> I can see Smitty's why trying to get me killed in the middle, man. Come on, Smitty. I'm, I'm trying to keep, keep my head. I can see why they went middle linebacker here. Antoine Buck, their starter, 79 overall, but he is 33 years old. Yep. Buck is getting yeah. up there in age, yeah. yeah. 33 years old, man, and then uh, I look like Baltas. I don't know how to say that last time. I hope I said it right. Uh, well, and they 20, took Amani Adams last year in the draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the good part about adding Lewis to the mix is he's a user. So now, yeah. yes, with his ability and if he can be active on top of his player play, having that opportunity to touch the field pretty much right away then the yeah, Elks have bolstered their linebacker for now you got him Imani Adams you still got Buck for whatever use you could use him of uh, for what's left I mean the guy's still in the RFL top 100 after last year uh, so they just really solidified their linebacker core for the future with this guy and I thought he had a highlight tape but um, didn't send it to me uh, 
Well, and just like, you know, we have seen, you can pretty much plug and play the linebackers, especially a linebacker of the caliber that Dylan Lewis is. Yeah. And we've seen him there for two years now at OU. He wasn't the issue for OU in CS4. That was more of mourning for getting how to play quarterback for them back in CS4. But, you know, <laughs> Dylan, Dylan Lewis was consistently great for the Oklahoma defense for two years and I think as much as me personally me and Ryan don't like this pick I think as an unbiased pick for the Elks I I I think this is a pretty good pick for them and as we saw his impact Dylan Lewis you know the Oklahoma State game they were literally at the one yard line needing a touchdown to win the game and he makes the game ceiling pick at the one yard line and I, I think it shows just he has that clutch factor that a player needs and you know the Elks they made the playoffs last year no one thought that they were going to be in there you know yeah. and they got rounded I mean they got routed by the it, you know by Pat's team and um, this yeah, is well. what they needed. Yeah, and this is a this is a pick where you let him you let him probably put him in the sub linebacker spot for the first year. Then after you probably gonna you're more than likely gonna let Buck and um, Stevens walk, so that way and he's probably gonna take over after this year, and and we'll probably see Dylan Lewis a lot more um, that, um, in year two in his second year. Got the miners on the board here with the twenty third pick of the draft. Let's see. This is still one of those teams that I feel like they still need to go on the defensive side of the ball. I know to me, I I, I love Grant, but I, I still think it was a miss with their first pick. But I think they go defensive here with their second pick. And just like I was saying, Dunn loves the users that have the reloads and everything, I think they go with the user player here, if I had to guess. Yeah, so hopefully yeah. hopefully he tell us if he's on the phone with him again so we'll know who to look for. <laughs> um, Let's see. Miners, like, I, I'll be honest. Miners is one team who I'm stumped on who they can take because, like, like, um, like um, Kai Cash said in the chat, man, they are well-rounded, so... There's not many, there's not many spots that they are. I don't really. I don't really see and really, spot. with with where Dylan Lewis, I mean Dylan Lewis just went, and I thought they needed a you know possibly go middle linebacker here in the draft. Um, so I don't know if there's really a middle linebacker first round that's calling their name um, for who has went. Maybe George Chamberlain, but just like I said, we all know Dunn loves his user players, so. He and loves building pick, that community. The pick is in. All right, Let's see what they chose. The 23rd pick of the first round of the RFL draft. The Sacramento Miners selects Steve Washington, running back from Louisville. 73 overall, 91 speed, 86 right. shoot move, and 83 ball carrier vision. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's Not. interesting. I mean, they they had a they had their running back of the future kind of wash out on them, so yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that does make yeah. sense. Uh, that, that I get it. He's. I mean, I yeah, it, 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 I can. T- it makes a little bit more sense than the last pick. I'm be honest. Um, but still puzzling gonna, me a little bit. Still puzzling me a little bit. I but am I can too. See that. Yeah, cause I just. I'm just wondering what's gonna. I, What's going on, I'm mainly surprised because they already, uh, at least as far as I remember, they still have Denard Locker. They got Denard. But Locker you're also right telling me that <laughs> okay, uh, so I I get it. He's the running back of the year. Okay, Steve Washington had a great year, but can I just list off three names here that I think? And this is no offense to Steve Washington or anything. I think he's a great running back. But you're you're telling me with Euro Winbush, Seamus Davy Fitzpatrick, and Chris Clark still on the board, he's yeah. the first running back to go off the board? 
Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. That one, that yeah. that. Okay, so yeah, like you said, no shade to Steve Washington, but you got Euro Windblitzen out there, man. Uh, I don't. Maybe, maybe there's something he likes about Washington's place. I like Steve. Yeah, like I like Washington. He's a great running back. Was a big reason why the Cardinals got to their first ever bowl bowl game. He won running back of the year, but. You know, just like I said with Stephen King, you know, the talent that Chris Clark at Oregon showed and what Euro Winbush did for three years, what Seamus David Fitzpatrick did at Texas and Baylor, like that's the first running back that you take when you have those three guys. To me, I had Steve Washington as the fourth best running back in this draft. And this is kind of a shock to me, guys. Like, I'm going to be honest, like no shade to Steve Washington. I think he's going to have a great career but I, I think there was better running backs that were left off the board here that you could have taken yeah and it's like like I said maybe maybe he likes um, Washington's play style better than Winbush and it fits his scheme more but or and, or and, Clark or Seamus you know maybe maybe that's the case but in all honesty I I'll, 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 probably would have went um went with uh, Winbush here if I was going to go running back. But may- maybe Steve fits better with the team. Pat, you're cutting out a little bit, buddy. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. So maybe, maybe Washington's a better team for them. Yeah. yeah, I know one thing. Like you guys mentioned, Dunn likes his users. So uh, yeah. we already know about Locker. He's an older guy. They just got him off out of free agency he's going to be a good back for now uh and they're looking for their future jacard torres who was there was a beast uh but you know we've heard sentiments about dunn saying he just is not active enough and he wants active members on his roster and steve washington's a guy who's very active so um yeah maybe he's looking at him being that future guy i mean obviously he's got to be if he's going to select him so um i think jacari torres might just be you know that guy in the back he could be the starter guy from future, but then you also got to think this new year of the RFL, you're going to need more than one back. You can't run a back the entire oh. season anymore. So maybe he's looking at that one-two punch with uh, yeah. Washington and Jakari Torres. And I mean, not bad, but like you said, I do feel that um, you know, he probably, probably could have got something else. Probably could have got something else. Yeah. Yeah. But I just he- think... <laughs> Yeah, go on, Amir. Sorry. I was going to say, man, um, I don't know if Dunn's doing a podcast anytime soon, but you got to explain some. You got to explain these two picks, man. We, we trying to hear that. I don't care if you got your eyes popping out your head talking crazy, man. We got to hear this. <laughs> and just like yeah. I was saying, and Miles said something in the chat that I saw. No, it's not the fact that Euro is an Ohio State guy. I, I just gave you two other names that I, in my opinion, are better running backs that just I've seen. Like Steve Washington, I think, is a great running back. But I think, in my opinion, Seamus Davy fits Patrick, who has shown how versatile he is at the running back spot and how amazing he was at Baylor and at Texas and then you have Chris Clark who was a home run threat any time that he had the ball in his hands I I just I don't like it, it's it, it's not that I think oh you didn't take Euro no it's just I just think you know the running backs that are still on the board to me I think he was the fourth running back on my board you guys can disagree with it but I, I think if you were gonna go running back here, Euro or Clark would have been the pick. Yeah, and it's and like like you were saying, it's not just like he's an Ohio State guy because I I'm on I, I'm a Miami guy. I hate I hate Ohio State with with how every time we play ended up. But oh, to be that. honest, I just I think Euro Wimbush would have been the better pick if you're gonna go running back here. I'm just being honest, and- man. And, and this is the draft, and we're all brought on here because of our analysis. It's not that we're hating. We're just giving our honest take on yeah, what and, we and think. And these takes aren't, in my opinion, they aren't bad. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not. This is how I look at it uh, for their takes. We already know that guys who've been in the college series a little longer typically have a higher chance of having a higher rating because if they had consistency, then they have a better chance of being better, even if their year wasn't the top amongst that season. 
Um, Washington absolutely balled his first year, but again, yeah. he only played one year. Uh, you yeah. look at Euro Winbush, you look at uh, those guys, as he's mentioning, those are two, three-year guys who've been in college putting up numbers. And so, and users at the, at that. So I get their takes. I And I understand why Dunn make, made the move as well, too. So, I mean, I don't think anything's wrong with either side or their takes. So, Yeah, and Steve yeah. Washington, he's a great pick. I think he's going to be a great running back for the minors and everything. But I just, in my opinion, I think it's a bit of a reach that you don't take either – and I just saw Dunn's comment, 21-year-old versus 22-year-old. I get it, yeah. but I still think with Euro or Sheamus or, you know, Chris Clark, I just it, – it, yeah, but Steve and, Washington is 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 going to do well. That's yeah. just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, he's going to do well. Like, he has he has, he has the great – he has great potential. And uh, as for the 21 versus 22-year-old, that's I know I know it's still it's still a age difference, but that's not it's not like Euro Wimbush is twenty three or twenty four years old. He's that's it's the, it's one year, and you have three years of a consistent player because we we've seen that Euro Wimbush was a very good running back, and then when he transferred to Ohio State. He got even better, and I would take that three years of consistency over a one year of top of one year. And not only that, just speaking about of what Steve Washington was, I mean, look at look at what Chris Clark was to the Oregon Ducks in a pass heavy offense. Like look at what Chris Clark did for the Oregon Ducks in a very pass heavy offense. The guy was a stud. So but that's just my opinion. The Red Dragons are up and I, I yeah. So the Red Dragons guys, who are we feeling here really quick before well, Smitty I'm, gives this pick? I'm about to just oh, announce it. So. All right. Yep. All right, here we go. <laughs> The twenty fourth pick of the man. first round. <laughs> the twenty fourth pick of the first round of the RFL draft. The San Diego Red Dragons selects Seth Brewer, defensive end, oh, wow. Brewer, Ohio State. Eighty one, oh, okay. no, seventy one overall, eighty five speed, mm. eighty four strength, and seventy seven finesse move. Seth Brewer, man. Hey, Brewer. You may not, does he have a tape? I didn't make one for him. Okay. Man, I didn't have a, I didn't have the time. I'm sorry, Brewer. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad pickup, man. We we were we were saying Ohio State should have went last. We should have went last pick, but hey, Ohio State goes here with Brewer. He he was a dog, man. He, he did really good. This was a guy. All right, so I think I can speak on this pick because, of course, I watched Ohio State football relentlessly. So this is a guy Mm -hmm. that he started off slow. (laughs) Stop it, Pat. So this was a guy that started off slow, but once he got going, this guy got going. Um, You know, had a very slow start to his year, and once he got going, the man was making sacks. He had, like, a three-sack game against the Stanford Cardinals. Um made an immediate impact, made one of the biggest plays in the Baylor game by getting that stop on third, a down that forced them into the fake punt. Um, But Brewer, you know, he's following in the footsteps of his older brother that we saw that won a reload bowl last year. And yeah. (laughs) 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 But, you know, congrats to Brewer. You know, Brewer is a community guy. You know, Drew is going to be on him to get those reloads up and be more active and everything. This is the guy that you draft for the potential of what he could be. And, you know, last, I mean, this, this year, you know, the Brewer brothers were champs, you know, Drew got a championship in the RFL and Seth got a championship in the college series and he comes out of his one year, you know, going to the dragons and the other, um, they're the same conference, aren't they? Um, yeah, uh, and Bulldogs, yes, they are. Yeah, they are. yeah, yeah. So they could be seeing each, each, each other. Do the Dragons and Bulldogs play Off the top this of year? Head, I'm pretty sure. Not sure. Yeah, I'm not I'm sure. Either. We'll have to look because, uh, yeah, they could be playing against each other. So, yeah, that's awesome. Ken Grass, Seth. 
Let's pick see. number 25, and we have yeah. the Dreadnoughts for their third yeah. pick in the first round. Yeah. Okay, so the Dreadnoughts took Colo Ransom, and they took Michael Simmons. So, so looking at what they have available and looking at what's actually in this draft, has anybody – Holcomb's been taken. There's, there's some tight ends out here. I think they go offensive line here. Yeah, because okay. I, I – Maybe offensive line, yeah, because we were. I think that's what we were talking about originally before they went with Polo Ransom. We were saying. I think they go with Sean Nix here. I think they go with Sean Nix from LSU. Sean Nix is still on the board. Yep, yep. It was. Yeah, that'd be interesting. They did. This was the. This was when we were talking about the O line because I saw Frank Champion. So. Yeah. Yeah. I I really think that they're gonna. I really I really say that they should go O line because Frank Champion is. He's 23, two year, two years left on his contract, but he's only a 72, and he hasn't. I, I don't know if he's progressed. Like, he's not uh, a community guy, at least not anymore. Yeah, I don't think I don't know if he's progressed like how Frankie would like. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they go O line here, or or interior O line. Maybe. Yeah. Um, he's- yeah, you still got what Sean Nick still on the board. You got Jonathan Craig from UNC. You got um, Kenny Blackwell from Ohio State. Chad got, Butcher from Miami. You got Trey Miranda. He's an interior line. He plays center, but you can move him over there to left left guard. Mateo Rivera from Texas A and M. See somebody saying take Eddie Champ. <laughs> they could go tying in here, but then again, I, I like I know Eddie Champ, but I feel like the LSU guy. I, I can't remember his name. Keith Duvall. Oh, that guy was a stud. I don't know. Like he was second in catches in the RFL College Series. Or may, maybe Jaden Bush as well. Jaden Bush, yeah, that's one of those guys where he has the potential to be a monster. Yeah. So, hey, there's there's many different directions they can go here. Uh, what? Well, like I say, either O line. I say I say go left guard here. Get somebody for you for that left guard spot. I mean, let, but let's let's let me look into this tight end pick. So, um, George, he is. 28 years old, 75 overall, so he's not going to be progressing too much now. All right, the pick is in. Uh, okay. With the 25th pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the San Antonio Dreadnought selects Miles Brock. Defensive tackle. Nice pick. Clemson. 75 right. overall, 90 strength, 79 block shedding, and 79 power moves. Pat, I'll let you have the floor here. Yeah. <laughs> you get it, Pat? <laughs> no, the floor was empty, apparently. <laughs> oh. Pat, Pat done disappeared on us. Pat gone. Pat no, but this game. was a guy, that, after watching the Ohio State game and the two Miami games, this was a guy that gave everyone it's oh, Miles talking, Brock was an absolute. Oh, yeah, he's talking, but is this muted? Uh, you, you might, yeah, if you could hear us, you might be muted. Let's see, all right, Dreadnoughts, deep two. Oh. There you go. You dropped that call. All oh. right. So D tackle here, you got Stanley, who is 34. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that and that alone tells me what I need to know. Benjamin, who is 28. Yeah, and then Hart, who will be the next guy, is 24. So yeah, I can definitely see this. See this uh, pick. This pick definitely makes a lot of sense. Well, and just like you said, I mean, he was what the he was second in sacks or third in sacks in deep in the defensive tackle lineman stats, and this guy was an absolute dog to play against any center or right guard or left guard he played against. He bullied them around, 
and yeah. was a big reason why Clemson went on the six seven six game winning streak that they had throughout College Series Five. And I, I think this has been a very good draft for the Dreads. I, yeah. I think with the three picks that they have gone in the first round, I'm really liking these picks because, what, they only had one first-round pick last year with CC and didn't have another pick until the fourth round. And, you know, now they had three first-round picks, and to me, I, I, I think they've hit on all of their picks. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. 30, 39, ta- 39 total tackles, four TFLs, 11 and a half sacks. And here's the thing where, I, where, I, where, that, where, where I'm really surprised. Um, five forced fumbles. So if you're playing against the wow. Dreadnoughts, you're probably, you're probably going to be preaching ball security, man, because five forced fumbles. Especially against and, this guy. Man, yeah. Yeah. Wrong. yeah. Yep. Strong arm robbery out here, man. I mean, he's been, you know he was built over uh, built over an NFL. First there is round. Pat. Be good. There yeah, goes. there he goes. There he goes. All right, Pat. Pat, here is the floor, really uh, quick. If 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 you want to talk about your guy. Um. Well, you guys, you guys already did, but you know, strong causes fumbles. Built over an NFL first rounder. Um. You just. I, I mean, the the production. You know, maybe a lot of people thought it wasn't there, but you got, you couldn't run against him. That was the thing that killed a lot of you know. That was the thing that killed a lot of Clemson's opponents. Uh, that killed uh, us. Pecan. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I wasn't. I was going to say that, but yes. Oh, you were waiting for me to bring up how you guys waiting, beat yeah, our butts. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't have to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hawks right. got their second pick of the first round oh. here. I God, think we go. I think. In my opinion, I think we go cornerback here. Xavier Spriggs is still on the board from Ohio State. I would love to have my boy Spriggs over here. Z, I hope you come to us. But even if we don't get Z, I would like us to get uh, Dalen Mitchell here. But that's just what I like to see. You know, Smitty, of course, is going to take whoever he feels like is a good fit. But, you know, when you see how many reloads that Xavier Spriggs or Dalen Mitchell have, I think they are good user guys to have on the team, and they are still on the board. Yeah. If you're going cornerback, yeah, those would be two, those would be, uh, two great picks right there. Yeah, in my opinion, yeah. uh, Spriggs is the best cornerback left on the board. Um, and then Dalen Mitchell is still pretty is still a pretty good cornerback, so you can either, you can go, either go – you can either go to or the you've got the guy yeah and you got the guy from LSU I can't remember his name he's a generic I can't remember his name uh, uh, Kendrick Ellington uh, okay. Kendrick Ellington so with the 26th pick of the first round of the RFL draft the Portland Snowhawks selects Xavier Spriggs oh, let's, let's go, let's go. Spriggs let's go Z five speed 78 yeah, 95 coverage speed. and 75 zone coverage. I don't know if he has. Wow. Team, but two year guy. No, I, will that's ball really good. In silence. I couldn't make I, him a tape. I'm sorry, Z. I'm sorry, Z. Oh. I couldn't make 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 you a tape. But hey, two hey, times. Def- I. Hey, I had so much going on, man. So yeah. So Spriggs, man. Let me just say about. This guy, you know, just like with Brock, where he wasn't in the prime spot where he got overlooked by Joel Howard, got overlooked, you know, by Wardell Mack. This was a guy that was still straps on the other side of the ball. And he was the big reason why we won, you know, the CS4, CS5 national championships. And um, I'm so excited to have you here, Z. I can't wait till... You know, we invite you into the chats, man. I'm I'm so excited that we got you, buddy. Yeah, this is this was a steal. Right? This is a steal right here, man. He's gonna fit nicely in the slot cornerback spot to start out. What? Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me see that. Um, and me and Pat a little bit conversating. We we, we haven't we haven't a discussion here, I guess. Um, uh, okay. Oh yeah, because you're the Explorers GM. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, no, 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 but 
<laughs> but, 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 but okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, okay, let me, I'll, I'm thinking, Smitty, go ahead, go ahead, keep, keep, the rest of you keep talking, okay? Let me just say, so Sprigs had a much bigger stat year when it came to CS4 because, as everybody know, with Joel Howard, you know, Joel Howard was a, like, a true CB1 that you could have gotten out of anywhere. So a lot of quarterbacks had to test the other side of the field where Spriggs was, and we saw that he made a mess with Alan Morning and everything. Um, Chip Taylor, you know, he picked on Chip Chip one. Taylor a lot. Was the only bright bright spot for us in the West Virginia game back in CS4, and then in CS5, he was big for us in CS5, and um, I'm so excited to have Z here, man. Yeah, this okay. is like I said, this is a steal, man. This is a steal. Yeah, the fact that he fell this far, I thought Spriggs would have gone maybe in the top 20, but this is a steal for he, us. I thought he was yeah, a great addition to your team. I thought he'd been the first court, first or first cornerback off the board. To be honest, man. Um, I know Khalil and Cam and I. I mean, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, the guy's got over a hundred k reloads. He's gonna get that up big time. And then 95 yeah. speed. Like I said, for cornerbacks, man. If you is the the higher your speed, man, that's it's it's amazing because you have a less chance of getting cooked by these receivers. And if you me- and if you mess up, you have a- and if you mess up like off the release, you have a chance at catching back up with them and making a play. Uh, so explorers here. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, Y'all don't need I'm nobody. Making- Y'all don't need nobody. <laughs> I'm making suggestions. How about that? Let's uh, let's go with that. Y'all don't need. Y'all don't need nothing. Y'all, y'all good, bro. Okay. Well, I well, I guess we're all good then. So, so you'll, uh, so you give me your pick. I'm, I'm going back and forth with you, Pat. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, that, uh, okay. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, that works, Smitty. Hold on. The end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I had them going middle linebacker in my mock draft, but I feel like with the middle linebacker talent that was taken in this draft, it, the Explorers are one of those teams that's like kind of best player available. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's kind of what we're uh, that's kind of where we're going here. Yeah, that's what you said earlier. I think, right? That, that's the argument. Yeah. Middle linebacker. So in can... It's not really an argument. I'm, I, it, it's Smitty's decision. I'm just. Pat, do you feel like that that's pretty much like kind of like the case with you guys? It's almost like a best player available. Just kind of have your pick of of who you want, really. Yeah, well, the thing is, you know, a lot of the guys we want are gone because people have done a good job in the draft this year. You know, uh, that's my last suggestion before I pull. I'm sticking with the first oh. one over the other, though. What you think? Um, okay, what a, hold on. I got it. Well, let me counter that, sir. Mm, they go they go middle linebacker you got Shaquille Bolden um still out there if they go left outside linebacker you got George Chamberlain I know we were talking about him uh Tay Devine Shaden Wilson okay well let's see Ooh, this is a tough call um okay, let's just go ahead and do it uh okay yeah let's do that either is fine so i'll just leave it up to you to decide out of those okay well no, no that's good all right <laughs> all right how about that then i don't see any other eats god lee man he's i'm about sick of y'all explorers man okay. yeah i think yeah he's a good fit i think okay Thanks. javier wheatley is still on the board he is, and he's and he is, uh, he's he's on our he's on on our list at least at least on my list. So yeah. Yeah. No, I know Wyatt Harris got much of the love too, but this guy right. was a dog for us early too. I don't know. I agree. Yeah. This man just saying yes to everything. <laughs> he's like, hey, whoever y'all be a fit for okay, the so explorers, please. This guy doesn't have a photo, and he's not alignment. So we missed uh, miss that one. But oh. um, Oops. Corbin Coles, you're getting drafted again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe right they there. go. I may. Well, how old is Bradley a Tagwe? Uh, he's got yeah, multiple backs. In the back oh, true, yeah, true. Got, yeah, they have side. like they he, he have, also signed a four-year deal. We got guys on the come up, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not, maybe not, not a huge priority. Wait, is he still on the team? You, you still got Tommy Bigby back there as well. Yeah. Yes, we do. Oh yeah. All right. And you have Kareem okay. with the 27th pick of the first round of the RFL draft. The Columbus Explorers selects Shaquille Bolden. Middle linebacker. Yep. Ooh, nice. 74 overall. Nice guy. Middle speed, linebacker. 84 hit power and 80. Tackles. Are you talking about that? Yeah, that's that's the guy I mentioned, hey. Shaquille Bolden. Uh, yeah. Yeah, remember you, you said that before. Yeah, that's a good pickup there, man. I was looking Thank at you. that. I was looking at that middle linebacker spot, and. And to me, this was, yeah, this was the next best middle linebacker that you could take out of the draft. I had them in case, like, I projected them Dylan Lewis here, but of course he already went. Um, he may not have played like he was Tyler Cage. <laughs> he was definitely the guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yes. Like, this guy, he wasn't Tyler Cage, and those were some hard shoes to fill. But yeah. when you look at his stats and what he did for Alabama this year, he was a monster. You talking about Corbin Coates? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, mean, I mean, you know, I would, I would have loved for the Explorers to get Garrett Evans, but we, you know, we weren't gonna, we didn't really want to trade up what it would have cost us to get up there to get Garrett Evans. So. Yeah, and looking at this Explorers roster, Demarco. Their, their current middle linebacker is 31 years old, and he has two years left on his deal. So you're probably going to see Bolden really come into play uh, soon, and he's going to he's going to get them playing time. Yes. Yeah. We are running. A and this is a spot too. Right, and this is a spot where the Explorers are a team that you know, because of course with new coaches about to come in and everything this is a team that a coach would love to play on and this is oh, yeah. a guy that hey i got this bolden guy that i can build off of he's young and everything so i feel like this is a great fit for the explorers yeah hard hitter fast you know you talk about the marco lando top 100 player absolute beast that's a guy develop right he can fit right in and pick up where he left off you know and have a great career as well so it's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to see what he will do for the Explorers. Yeah. And we have the Black Knights with their second first round oh, pick man. of the night back on the board. You know, if Pat, to me, if Pat is smiling, that shouldn't be a good thing for the rest of us. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know anything, <laughs> I don't know anything about this coaching thing. What? Uh, let's see. All right, now I gotta look at this. Now I gotta look at the depth chart for the Knights. Who? Well, they, well, they wait, who did the Black Knights take? Um, lineman. Can't remember. Good for yeah. them. I think it was KC. No, it was a right guard. So. Uh, right guard was uh, it? It was Vince. So Lewis. they already took the right guard. Vince. I had them going cornerback. This is where Dalen Mitchell could go here. Uh, if Mitchell? you're gonna go cornerback, okay. if you're gonna go cornerback, yeah, that's the. Uh, yeah, if you go corner there, that's definitely the best available guy, um, and that's honestly the, where I see them going because we already know the sip, strong safety situation. Then Sherrod Foster, I think he's pretty sure Sherrod Foster is a young guy. Yeah, he's supposed to be on there. I yeah, don't know if yeah. The old roster, but he's technically on the team. Yeah, no, uh, Sherrod Foster was drafted last year on the draft. Yeah, he's so, yeah. the okay. Michigan guy. But cornerback yeah. is something that they need as well. And um, okay, what I, about yeah, what they, about what about left outside linebacker? Uh, George Chamberlain here because Malcolm Riley, six eight overall, and he's twenty five. So a few more seasons. Uh, mm, yeah, but I, I think you could. I mean, so they're running a four three, right? Uh, I believe yes. They four, could three. move Tank Frost over there. I don't know if it's the greatest idea. I tell you, I'm not a hundred percent sure on what scheme guys will be running. Um, okay, fair so enough. Yeah, it could be either or. Yeah, they could move Tank Frost there. They could move Mullins back there. Carter. 
25. Yeah, so there's they, they have options. They have options, yeah. Uh, I believe they're I, I believe they're either going to go outside backer or corner here. They need a right tackle badly, though. Oh, let's look at that. Yes, they do. Right. Tackle. They could get Kendall Hall from Ohio State. Ooh, they yeah, could they go. Right they um, could go Juan Corona from Washington. Yeah, that's a possibility. Uh, they could go. Uh, Benji Farr from Washington, the left tackle. I mean, uh, Raphael Bow from USC. Uh, the guy from Tennessee has he been taken yet, Taylor? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. oh well, never mind then. All right, pick is in. With the 28th pick in the first round of the RFL draft, the London Black Knights deluxe, Dalen Mitchell, cornerback yep. from Miami. 72 like like overall, All right. 92 speed, Congrats. 74 man coverage, and 72 zone coverage. I'm not sure if That's we got good. a tape. Let's Let go, see. Teddy. Oops. Okay. Yes, sir. Dalen Mitchell, man. This is a community guy. Yeah. This is a community guy that you love to have on your team. I've had many fun talks with this guy. I think he's just, you know, when you have the type of personalities that you have on the Black Knights, like, Om like Omari Harris, like he fits into the personalities that they have there at the Black Knights. And I, I, I think Dalen Mitchell going here, I mean, he made the best play of his collegiate career by getting the game-winning pick. And the Con Bowl against Penn uh, State, I, I I think this is a great fit and pick for the Black Knights. So, congrats, man. Yeah, 6'3", 200 pounds, man. 72 overall, 92 speed. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice pick. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. You see that Miami boy nice. flying off the board, man. <laughs> right. So no tape I saw there, but uh, Dalen Mitchell, Black Knight. Another thing to just to dive into that pick as to why I chose it. Definitely was seeking to go outside linebacker for them because their light outside linebackers are trash, really. But um, yeah. Yeah. I, I look at, you know, they definitely needed a corner as well. Although their overalls are higher than those outside linebackers, you start to really look at um, the situation of, Who's going to be able to contribute more and as active as a user as he is and like pecan uh elaborated on with the personalities he'll mesh well in that locker room um and he can definitely be a day one guy very soon if he just keeps working and being active and putting his roll reloads up he could be a uh, day one corner out there yeah but now yeah i agree on the pick number 29 and just like you were saying, Smitty, I mean, he is a very active guy. We see him in the chats. He's at the games. Like, this is a guy, you know, that kind of fits with Omari Harris, too, with that personality and the vibe that they have going on there on the yeah. south side of London and everything. I I think this is a great fit for him. And I, I, I've always liked Dale, and I think he's great to talk uh, to. He's always has... The high spirits always up a beat about everything, so this is a great, great pick. Yeah. Doubling Celtic yeah, he, he, Tigers on a bit. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay. Celtic this Tigers. is a this this is a team that is also I feel like that's in the explorers range of they can just have their pick of the litter. But not really. How old? How old? Oh no, guys no, are no they are. Hurting. Guys are able to get their pick on. Really hey, yeah, hey, true. how old? How old is Worsley now? Like, um, uh, Worsley he's 31 or 32? 31? He's 32. Oh, oh 32. 32, okay. He's not their yeah. biggest problem. No, I think they do need a guard. I think they either go Chad Kutcher from Miami or Kenny Blackwell from Ohio State. I, I think they need a left guard. But yeah. then again... Maybe I'm overselling Sean Nix. I don't know, Smitty. Maybe I'm overrating Sean Nix a bit. I saw his stats. I thought he played well. But I I think with Kenny What's Blackwell or Chet Cook. <laughs> I know, and I haven't seen him go. And I'm like, hey, I'm, maybe I'm not that great. So I'm surprised you're not advocating for Kenny Blackwell, man. Ohio State. 
Oh, no. Too many guys would, you know, oh, you just want to talk about Ohio State hey, guys. Hey, man, give you a true assessment, opinion on things, you know? All right, what about I still the... think... Yeah. Is Quincy Jenkins... I still available? think they need to call Yeah, Quincy Jenkins still... Quincy, Quincy Jen Jenkins is available. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at the depth chart. I think they need somebody like him. Oh. Well, we'll find out in a second, won't we? Right, we sure will. Oh, yeah. Take his in. That man, Smitty, moving. All right. Where's this? Okay. With the 29th pick of the first round of the RFL draft. The Dublin Celtic Tigers selects Louis Quintana. Ooh. Defensive hey, goal hey, of wow. Miami. Good pick. 74 oh, right. ball, 85 nice strength. Nice stats. With Quintana. 84 strength and 80 power moves. Hey, man. He did send his highlight tape. Really I need to get up. that. I'm happy to see my boy go off the board, man. He's a, At 29th, he's a steal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. At 29th, yeah. yes. And then he's definitely probably he's probably definitely gonna be getting that day one start because he's the same overall oh, yeah, as their he current. Is. Yeah, he's the current overall. He's the same overall as their current left man. And bro is was not just no, that's he's like 31. 31. 31, yeah. So 31 in on last year's deal. So hey, Quintana, day one starter, man. Congratulations. Congrats. And let's just say this was one guy who, in his first ever collegiate play, scored a touchdown on the defensive side of the ball. This is it right here. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Man. And this is just a fitting because for me, he gives me Jason Lindsley vibes back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. And not to mention, right. he's a. Uh, He's a user player who we know is, is active, and so I think he's going to be um, a key piece to getting kind of back what the Celtic Tigers defense used to be with at least some type of, you know, threat off the edge. And so, um, you know, losing Jason Lindsley, who is 34 right now, I think 35, um, and, you know, he going over there to Sacramento to be on the minors. You know, you replace that with a guy like this who in just one year of college football with the Hurricanes did absolute work, you know, and I think he fits the legacy and mold of what the Celtic Tigers bring there, man. Of course, we need to get some more guys over there that are users for the Celtic Tigers, so he might be a little lonely for a season, but um, hey, man, <laughs> start the culture. This is the culture for you to build, Luis. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just happy to see all these Miami guys out going up the board, man. <laughs> yeah, this has been a Miami draft. I mean, you know, this could be kind of tough year for them. You know, it's only one game, and it's so hard to just reload on talent every single year, you know. But what Luis yeah. Catana, what he was able to do in his only year at Miami, he was a force to be reckoned with. And this is a very great pick. And what a draft for the Miami Canes, man, we have seen time and time again that they are one of the best teams in the RFL when it comes to pro producing college talent. And yeah. you know, King, congrats to this guy. He's also a very ac active community member. Just like Smitty said, you might be a little bit lonely there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, still, true. this is a great spot for you. Yeah. Got steamers up next. Famous man. All right, Amir. <laughs> I'll let you have the floor <laughs> here, Amir. Uh, right now. I'm... Rodney Goins. Mm. I don't know. I don't In know, man. Because I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, because th I'm definitely looking at that strong safety spot. Like we have a, we have a big need there. But I'm also looking at our guards. That's another one I'm looking at because, okay, so if you look at strong safety. Uh, Lawrence Sears, 73 overall, right. and he is how old? There is no backup. No backup, and he's 27, so we could go Rodney Goins here. That would that would definitely be a good pickup. I hear there's this guy named Sean Nix, you know. I don't know if we've ever heard oh. his name tonight, but uh, I've, I, I've heard there's this Sean Nix guy that's still on the board. Yeah. We'll see. This guy's we'll see. 30 million times. 
Let's see. Then you get, on the interior line, you got um, Gordon, who is he's our left guard, 77 overall. Let's see. How old is he? He's 30. And you got Harmon on the other side, right guard, who is also 30. So I say, honestly, if we don't, I, I really see either interior O-line or getting Rodney Goins. Because I'll be honest, I didn't think Rodney was going to fall to us, man. So if we I didn't him, think Rodney would still be here, yeah. So that would definitely be a good pickup there and fill in a much-needed hole on the defense side of the ball. Or we could go Kenny Blackwell or somebody like him or Fitzsimmons from Arizona State. So, Chad Kutcher from Miami. Yeah. There we go with the Kutcher. Yeah, so let's see. Pick is in. Sure, there was much rejoicing. All right. With the 30th pick of the first round of the RFL draft, the Memphis Steamers selects Rodney Goins. Strong hey, safety. Okay. Let's hey, go, right. Rodney. 71 Rodney. Overall, 92 speed, 78 tackling, and 70 zone coverage. Let's go, Rodney. Yes, sir. Welcome to Memphis, Rodney. <laughs> Welcome to Memphis, The Steamers man. just drafted a, a 40-year-old in plain hiding. <laughs> <laughs> you got a tape, too. Rodney, oh, well, there you go. congrats, man. Bro, we have been waiting for you to come off the board, but we know that, yes, like just like Spinny said, the strong safety spot is not like the biggest spot that you'll take, unless it's like a game-breaking strong safety, but, you know, he, uh, obviously with the whole Tiger Montana thing that we know of after his player took over his other guy, this was clear-cut the best strong yeah. safe, 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 safety on the board. Hey, hey, records on my demo. Did y'all boys not get the memo? Okay. I do not we stay at the Intercontinental. And anything I got is not a rental. I own that mom. Figure it out, just the symbol. My stock been going up like a crescendo. A bunch of handshakes from the face. But I do not want to be friends though. I told y'all mom. Man, this is not a love song. This a stripper on a men club song. This a what's forever hold a grudge song. But just like I was saying, I mean, this is a great community guy that on the team as well. He, he, he definitely fits in very well with you in here. Um, with what he brings is just a community member, a very active, you know, he's a very active guy in the chat. And they don't have no award for that. And I know the steamers, you guys don't have a lot of users or players, so. Rodney and they don't have no more for you that. Know, at least, you know, bring don't come with trophies. Ain't no envelopes so. to open. I just do it because I'm supposed to. I go to dreams <laughs> with a suitcase. Uh, <laughs> I got my whole country got, on a new way. She like, I heard all your <laughs> stay where you stay. That is, uh, yeah. So big, I so that's a couple of upgrades right there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, welcome to, hey, like I said, welcome to Memphis, Rodney. Two more picks left in the RFL draft. So let's go ahead and get back. Well, in this round, anyway. And yeah. the last two picks oh, belong yeah. to coaches. All right. Yay. Let's see how <laughs> that's, they fare. That's good. As next pick yep, here, we got the Bulls and the Bulldogs. This is actually the uh, Tigers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Ooh, Tigers. Okay. Because they traded nice. not too long ago. Yep. All righty. What is Coach oh, okay. Stein thinking here? I mean, he had a very solid year uh, last year, man. Great year, uh, which technically they should have been in the playoffs. Um, Sorry, like Blunt. Yeah. Sorry, Blunt. Tough pill to oh, yeah. swallow, but it's based off the head-to-head -head is what called it. Uh, I can't remember who it was against, but. Um, I just the knew they were going to make it, even though mathematically they should have, and it was uh, like, oh, man, they're going to be sick. Yeah. Well, maybe if they didn't get destroyed by the Monarchs, they wouldn't have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. that was the one, yeah. Yeah, well. 
It was that week two game against the Monarchs that they can blame. They want to blame us, but it's like, did y'all not see how many how the Monarchs destroyed you guys in week two? So it was that, it was that darn playoff committee that did them in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, let's see. They so the, yeah, the Snowhawks just brings in a lot more ratings. You know. That's right. Yeah. They have a very young goal line, so I don't see them going a line here. You got yeah. so I'm. Let's see. Okay. And sign. I like you guys. I like the. I I like what the Tigers are doing over there. I still. I have them going cornerback here, even though I know they have a lot of cornerbacks there. But you know that may be a shot. But. Mm. Mm. I don't know about corner. I don't know about cornerback either. I was. So yeah, I'm not really sure. You spit bomb. Okay. Let's see what we're looking at here. Mm. Uh, Ooh, yeah, no, that's that, that's solid there. Let's see. Big is yeah. yeah, I like the offense. I like. I, I say, I say they might go D tackle. I say D tackle maybe. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock with D tackle because. Uh, well, they did take. Rucker there last year from Ohio State. Do you think they go back there? All right. Well, so well, actually, let's find out. With the 31st pick in the first round of the RFL draft, the Chicago, well, the Tampa Bay Tigers selects Tampa. Tampa George Bay. Chamberlain, outside Ooh. linebacker. Uh, wow. wow. 73 overall, 88 hit power, 86 speed, and 78 pursuit. Eight. This is a steal. Yeah, but where do you where do you put them? There's a, there's um, and they, they uh, have guys. Uh, probably. Let's see. I mean, I'm not saying he's. A, I mean, he's a he's a heck of a player. I, you know, I'm not arguing that. Hey, we were thinking they're not going to be resigning Goliath. I don't know. Okay, maybe. That maybe. Would, maybe that would make sense. Maybe, maybe because trade. yeah, they. Yeah, I mean, Christie's getting old. Maldro's getting Maldro's old. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. Last. Jacob week. Pinkston, Long Billups. It's, it's an interesting one. All right, here are the real old champs. Here come the Bulldogs. <laughs> The sorry, s sorry to Drew Brewer that I Chiefs. spoke Seth Brewer's too many name. You know that I said Seth's name too much tonight. Uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> that, that might not have been it. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying. Mm, might not have been it. the reason. Ooh, um, okay. Let's see. Some ideas here. All right, the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs. Let's see. Uh, outside linebacker. Yeah, the right outside spot. Yeah, that's uh, that's the first thing I noticed. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. see. Let's, let's look at these oh, right outside right. linebackers. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this draft took yeah. just about as much time as last year. So uh, I know guys got who different can... times, but uh, we're consistent. <laughs> yeah, we definitely made the clock can... for the last two days. <laughs> who can LC three get picked off by this time? Oh, now <laughs> come on. Let's see. Right. Yeah, so, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Crazy. Um, oh well. I I can see them going right outside linebacker what about here with, fight either, side, you know? with either Shay Shaden Wilson or Tay Devine. Yeah, that would be interesting. I can see them. Going Last pick of the draft. What you got? Let's read. I, I can maybe see Cam. I can see Cam Johnson here. Quincy Jenkins. You say Cam yeah, Johnson? Yeah, honestly. I Cam Johnson here. Yeah, because Jacoby Haskins. That's Haskin, not. You know, Colby Haskins, uh, yeah. he's on the downside of his career. True, true. I, I, okay. I don't see, yeah. Uh, I, I don't see that uh, anybody else is ready to step up for that for them. So, yeah, that could be yes. a spot. The fact yes. Cam Johnson is still on the board, too. I just now realize that Cam John Johnson is still on the like board. I because yeah. you guys are mentioning him, he's going to pick him up. <laughs> He's probably listening right now. That's what, that's what probably, definitely for, probably took all the guys he probably thought was going to probably slide or was hoping to slide. 
Yeah, I don't see anything really on off offense side of the ball that they would take. So I think either yeah. that outside backer spot or maybe going Cam Johnson. Yeah, both could work. They're good, good choices. You say Cam got the most reloads. Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah, Let's also the reloads. Too. Let's see. This has been a great draft, man. Yeah, yeah, so with the it hasn't felt too long. I, I'm I'm glad to bring y'all on to be able to talk and stuff, and I just get to work and stuff. I mean, it's still the same time, but I ain't gonna lie. Every day last year doing the draft was like draining, but now that I understand how to work the OBS uh, more smoother now, how to get things in and out without wasting too much. I mean, this has been a great draft. Ooh. Yeah, Cam Johnson. What, what, got... what time does day two start, Smitty? Uh, day two, I'm seeking to start at six o'clock. All right. All right. Yeah. And that'll right. be rounds two and rounds three. Round Okay, and I'm going to let, let y'all know right now, day three is definitely going to be at 12 noon. <laughs> so, I mean, you guys don't have to jump in then. I'll just go whatever, oh. whoever we got. Uh, but I yeah, will be I, in I here. Think, I, yeah, I think anybody can jump in and somebody will say hi to him. Yeah, just jump in and, you know, I'll have I'm just re 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 reminding guys. Day three was seven hours, folks. Seven so hours those round four. fours through yeah. seven. It's four rounds. I mean, you know, that's yeah. a lot of pick. Yeah, so Cam Johnson has 220,000 reloads. <laughs> Banking for years. Bro, oh yeah. my. He is RFL rich. Oh my God. Who <laughs> should have taken him without many reloads? Yeah, Lee. Is, is, is there any Bulldog players here? Is, is Reed up? Let me check. You might want to text him on He's on that. Make sure, make sure, bro. Make sure, bro. You say, I uh, say he I, I, idle, bro. I don't you, know. You sure they're not going to take a kicker? Lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a puncher. Because I'll be. Uh, I, 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 I hate that you say that now. Because I sure remember that we we didn't get to the kicker. Okay, he's <laughs> typing right now. He might be responding or might be dropping off this draft pick. Please don't let them take a kicker or a punter because we so forgot to get to them, man. Well, unfortunately, the best. Hey, don't tempt us. Okay, Drew. You, got, you win. Huh? Don't tempt us. Yeah. No. <laughs> what Brewer just no. said. No. <laughs> <laughs> As a last pick of the first round. <laughs> Y'all <Brewer, I'm laughs> <just doing. laughs> don't need one. <laughs> With the 30 second pick, punter. Take a long snapper. <laughs> Take a long snapper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's alive. He said they're uh, Who would they going take on, on the fly, part? they said. Right, There's only four guys over there, man. That punter, who would they take? <laughs> Brewer, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you just saw a two, Nate. <laughs> yep. There's no oh, way they waste a draft pick on a punter again. They got they got they got Alex Lane, Miles Jones, Nick Ellis, and Michael Pemberton that punter. I'm like, who who for the who, who I don't even know who any of those guys are. But Lord, do not let them take that. <laughs> Man, this is been a great draft, man. How y'all feeling in the draft? This man, I has couldn't been... read the chat, but the vibes has been great. Um, everything. Honestly, I great. think this has been a pretty fun draft. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, definitely. Always. Yeah. So how'd you guys first? Time I'm not going to be man. able to How be on too tomorrow. Man, I had fun, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I had fun. Well, I'm good. Once I got here, yeah, I did great, man. Although my Ears kind of hurt. Yeah, well. Oh, because my headset's been on so long. Man, my eyes hurt looking at this screen, dog. <laughs> I'm about to make sure. I got to make sure I put my blue light glasses on tomorrow, bro. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to have a major headache. Still waiting on Reed. Told him about five. Man. He's got five to seven extra minutes at the time I told him. It was two minutes ago. So he's got five oh. minutes. Let me just there. say, I I think the Dreadnoughts have hit on all of their picks. I really yeah. like the Dreadnoughts pick with how many picks that they yeah. had. Um, 
again, I know miners aren't going to like it because I know there's such a very vocal bunch, but I'm kind of iffy on what the miners went with in this first round. Yeah. On That's the bright just... side, they, they don't care what, what we think, so. <laughs> right, right. They aren't going to care. No. A very vocal bunch, and they believe in they have whatever they think is going to work. Um, Nate, how are you feeling about this draft, buddy? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was okay. I thought the Red Dragons had some good picks. Yes. Yeah. They picked really but well. Yeah. I think, but yeah, I think uh, I think the Dreadnoughts won this first round. I but. tell you what else to me. I'm surprised you're not saying it. Pecan Snowhawks and two picks they got. Oh, I'm Please. loving it. I didn't want to be biased. I'm just Dread saying, Dread like, I didn't want to be biased. Back. With technical bias, if it seems like it makes sense, then just say it. You know, a guy's yeah, going to call you biased regardless, you know. So I loved it. the Elijah Walker pick. I loved the Xavier Spriggs pick. The fact that we got Spriggs at 26, that's a major steal for us because I thought Spriggs would have been gone way farther than that. And getting Elijah Walker there, I'm so excited for what we drafted. I, I, I can definitely say that the Snowhawks – um, I agree with Nate that the Red Dragons as well and the Dreadnoughts to me are the biggest winners of this uh, first first round. Yeah, and honestly, I, I'm glad my boy Walker got picked, but gosh dang, now I got to deal with him and Khalil on the same team. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, the final pick of day one. To wrap up the first round is in. All right. With the 32nd pick in the first round of the RFL draft, the London Bulldogs selects Eddie Champ. Tight hey. end. Wow. Let's go, Eddie. Eddie, Eddie two. All right. Yeah, 86 overall. Eddie Champ uh, in the chat speed. complaining that he got left in the green. 80 oh. catches. Oh. 78 catch in traffic. Oh, yeah. That's they what were, they the were saying it in the chat. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I came to the draft and was left in the green room, room. Eddie didn't. Even, I don't even think unless he called unless he called Eddie, bro. Uh, I don't even think Eddie knew he was getting drafted here. Oh, I don't think he yeah. Let me just say, how about the fact that the champs drafted a champ? That's a good fit. That's a great fit. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Because Eddie, Eddie Flo in the chat is, that's Eddie Champ, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 Let's go. Let's Unless bro, unless bro, um, was playing, was like down playing it, bro. Show said, nah, Bulldogs will need a tight end. He swears he didn't know. He's in the chat. He swear he, he did. He swear he didn't know, but. Now, there's this crazy mosquito on my laptop right now. I want to click him, but I'm scared I might press a button. Not a Let me button. just say really quick on my thoughts is, um, what a draft for the Miami Hurricanes in this draft. This has shown many times that Miami, I, I, I think we have seen that the teams that produces talent, I think Miami, Baylor, Ohio State, and the Georgia Bowl, Bulldogs really showed. And how about the Sooners, man? A bounce back after yeah. the year that they had and see us for, you know, a terrible year from the standards that we have seen the Sooners have and for them to bounce back and have. I mean, I, I think this is their fourth, fifth guy to go in the first round. Like the Oklahoma Sooners had a great crop of talent. And um, yeah, King Grass Eddie Champ, you're going to a championship team in the Bulldogs and um, very, very excited to see how you do there, man. And, uh, you don't have to wait yeah. in the green room any longer. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, con congratulations to the Monarchs who got uh, Darius Donald. Congratulations to the Elks who got Dylan Lewis. Yeah. And yeah. congratulations to everyone who was able to get drafted in the first round. That's always going to be something that's yes, history right. to show that, hey, you was one of the dogs in the college series, and now it's time <laughs> to prove that you are worth that pick moving forward. But with that being yeah. said, my God. Right back here, okay. Now, 
Let's press the right button. Uh, yeah, there you go. Somebody's belling me. <laughs> I think that was Carlos. There you go. And speaking of that instrumental that I was playing, you can hear the, uh, I guess the underscore of this beat right now, playing right now. Um, this is the theme song of the RFL now. So we got a brand new theme song. It's going to be oh, hitting. Man. I got theme songs for Monday Night Football, theme songs That's for great. Friday Night, all that. It's about to be four. The RFL draft, day one is in the books. I'm not sure how many of the guys right now can come back for tomorrow. I know Pecan just said he couldn't, but we're starting up at 6 p.m. Eastern for two rounds for rounds two and rounds three. What'd you say, uh, Pat? Oh, okay, he's just putting up sixes. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. So, man, it's been a great one. I enjoyed the everyone. I enjoyed everything about this draft as always. Day two with rounds two and three on the way. And with that being said, it's your boy Smitty, our phone commissioner and player play commentator, joined along here with Amir Williams, Nate Allen, hey. Pat McNeil, and Pecan. Pecan the Don. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Popping up. Okay. Uh, I don't want to see it. That's why. Yeah. The, dry, the trailer was hard. The trailer was definitely hard. I mean, it was a good trailer. Yeah, it was. Okay, I think I got the right thing. Let me see. This be hard, yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. All right, yeah, let me get out of here. <laughs> <laughs>